Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Rider Club Radio, the internet's only podcast that's left, apparently, about <laughs> Tokusatsu. I'm Jeff. Don't bother and looking. I'm Liam. I'm Max. And I'm Tomaz. I'm pretty sure all of them were destroyed by Geo. Yeah, yes. fuck, I don't, I I don't blame them. before that. Yeah. I have a quick question. I want to clear something up early on in this episode. Bring is okay. this the Christmas episode? Because our next episode is coming out after Christmas. Is this is this yes. RCR Christmas edition? This is the Christmas spectacular. Merry oh, wow. Christmas, oh. everyone. Merry okay, Christmas. yeah. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy. I don't. I don't mean to date the episode, but it is Hanukkah right now. Yeah. Totally. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Merry Kwanzaa. Happy New uh, Year. Happy New. Oh yeah. Fuck. Happy we're coming out before New Year, aren't we? Or no, 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 that's right. We do it monthly. <laughs> After January, we're going to... Yeah, so... Yeah, Happy New Year as well. Uh, nothing about this episode is going to be Christmas-themed. I'll, I'll wrangle something. I'll think yeah. of it right now. You're going to put Peepo Bells in the credits? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes! Fuck. No, no, why, <laughs> you, why did it. you bring Just this that. upon us? Thank you, Max. Everyone must suffer. <laughs> <laughs> so on this most... Haunted episode of Rider Club Radio. We're going to be talking about Common Rider Geo episodes 10, 11, and 12. Uh, we're not doing 13 because it comes out later, so fuck you. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> well, as of right now, when we're sitting down talking, it's not out yet. So maybe it'll be out when we release it, but sorry. Not it'll right probably now. come out while we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> we will release <laughs> DLC that covers it. <laughs> yeah, get the day one patch. Only $3.99. Oh. So, why don't we go ahead and jump into this one. We have some emails for the end of the episode. We probably got some news to cover. But before we get into all that, Liam, why don't you tell us about what happened on Kamen Rider Geo, episode 10? Okay. Fuck, I'll try. Um, <laughs> so Did, if did we, you not write anything down again? I wrote it down. It's just these... Uh, 10's okay. 11 and 12 are going to be a bit of a trial. But 10, 10's okay. Um, so, episode 10, if you remember back in episode 9... The like ending stinger is that it's Eiji Hino that's in uh, in, in like jailed by Dan in the basement. He's the member of the Japanese diet that, that he's yep. got locked up down there. Oh man, and, that was uh, a month ago. Man, a he's a diet I would like to be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I don't know, what? but don't it was know. sexual. I'd like to eat. I him. wanna fuck him. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, <laughs> Jeff. You got it. You got to say it like, right on the nose, or else I'm not going to understand it. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, he throws the other O's character. Hina is her name? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hina is in there. And she has super strength, I guess, and she just, like, breaks through the chains and allows Eiji and her to, to leave. And they go and confront Dan, and Dan attacks him with a bunch of zombies and stuff, and Sogo comes in, uh, ever vigilant in his quest to confuse the shit out of the audience, comes in and is like, I'll help you do this evil deed, and he ties up uh, Eiji, and he ties up Hina, and uh, Gates gets so pissed off. Like, back at the house, Gates is hanging out with um, Tsukiyomi, and he gets so pissed off at this whole, oh, I'm so mad that I got my ass kicked by Sogo again, and he's all evil now. I'm leaving this house. I'm not coming back. For three whole episodes, I'm leaving. And um, Tsukiyomi has a talk with Gio's uncle where they're talking about... Uh, this ends up being, like, super plot but they're, they're, they're talking about fucking... Uh, Nobunaga. Nobunaga. Yeah, Uncle Clocks loves Uncle Clocks. Nobunaga. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like. Apparently, he was like a very violent guy and killed a lot of people and caused a lot of suffering. And Uncle Clocks is like, but how could he be bad if he controlled an entire country? You can't be bad and control <laughs> oh my, country. Only good guys control countries. <laughs> how could he be bad? If you can if rise to power, country? you deserve it. <laughs> So she's like, oh my god, I have to find out for myself if Dan Kuroto is really evil or not. I have to see if there's any merit to... No, to... she's she's gonna find out if Sogo's evil or yeah. not. I think Dan Kuroto laughing like a Saturday morning cartoon villain lets her know he's probably... <laughs> evil. She wants That's to... Him. She wants he's to know. Podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> She wants to know if, if there's any merit to Sogo's viewpoint, so nope. she does some research and finds out that Dan killed his dad. Uh, quite Called easily. it. Called it, Jeff. Called it, by the way. Yep. Turns out we I didn't can't... see the doll, but I fucking called that he was choking an extra that was supposed <laughs> to be his dad for some reason. It it turns out uh, when you can't stop time whenever you want, it's quite easy to kill you. So <laughs> Dan kills his own father, it turns out. And uh, Gates 
I guess he's so mad he, he goes for the salty run back and he comes back to Dan's castle. The what? Fights. The salty run back? The salty run back? When that you sounds disgusting. You, you come back after because you, you're not done even though you got licked once? It sounds like a delicious mixed alcohol drink. <laughs> the salty run back. I, I think it's that like sounds, a fighting game term. Yeah, it is. That mm-hmm. sounds like you gave someone head and then had a drink. Whoa! <laughs> go the to your local bar r- and a, a delicious mixed alcohol drink. Oh, like I said. <laughs> go to go to your local bar and ask for a salty run back and report back uh. as to what happens. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back and he he fights Sogo and Sogo reveals he's like, I was just tricking Dan. I'm not actually uh, evil with him. I need to I need to study him to find out what an evil overlord thinks like, so I can not think like that. Oh my god. Which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Fucking uh. bozo. Uh, AG... This is our hero. At least this I've is learned the main what character. not to do. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop this man from killing people so I know that it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> this... <laughs> This guy's like, moral compass is just set perfectly to be the main character and hero of our story. Good God. Uh, so, uh, A.G. and Sogo, they go again to confront uh, Dan Kuroto, because he frees A.G. And uh, so A.G.'s like, oh, you know, Sogo, you don't have to be a big hero to be a good guy. You just have to, like, save everyone you can reach. And, you know, I became a politician so I could reach as many people as I could and do as much good as possible. Uh-huh. And Sogo's like, damn, that's deep, O's. I'll keep that in mind. I'm not going to be a politician, though. I'm going to be an overlord. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing, yeah, these days. Down uh, with politics, up with oligarchy. <laughs> nothing, yeah, a nice monarchy. Shake things up. Oh, mon- yeah. An no. absolute dictatorship. Uh, so they go and they fight Dan, and Gates holds him off while Sogo goes back in time, and Aura appears... They have a big fucking awful CGI robot fight. Oh, uh, sorry, AG gives them the ride watch, too. Uh, they have a big fucking awful robot battle. They go back in time. And, I love uh, how your description has changed for Geo from they have a big fucking fight to they have a big fucking awful robot fight. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's always big fucking fights of some variety in this show, but... I don't. Re- I don't actually know what happens from this point until the end of the episode because I went and made a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's exactly what you fucking expect. Cause, so they go back and uh, Ur, Ur appears. Ur, Ur. And <laughs> he comes in just as Dan is giving like a megalomaniacal speech to nobody in particular in an empty room, and Ur is like, "Oh, I was listening to all that. Uh, you've got the desire to be a king, so I'll make you another O's." And uh, Sogo comes in. And says, not so fast, fucker. And they have a big fight. And uh, he wins. And Dan goes back to being Dan. And AG goes back to being a politician. And Gates officially moves out. Guys, what did you think of episode 10? The second half of the O's slash uh, Genmu arc? I think Someone it's... filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's genuinely interesting how everyone has such poor timing with time travel. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like you can go to I any point it, in time and you just keep showing up late. I I find it um boring. This episode was very boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we were talking about how great it was that Geo hadn't fallen into that like the same exact thing happens every episode trope. Uh but for these last few that we're going to be talking about today and a couple before, it absolutely does where yeah. he meets Ryder or Ryder's friend, and Ryder's friend is like, I like the cut of this sociopath's jib. Here's a watch I found. And then he transforms and he beats up the villain. The and they're not end. even doing the, the watch delivery anymore. It's just like, yeah, they just have it. And yeah, they, they dropped that completely. And you know what else they dropped? The legend riders he meets aren't riders anymore. Yeah, the and then the writer or the writer's friend looks off to the off stage and says, "Do, do I do my three lines? Can I go now? All, all right, see ya." <laughs> they, you and can they see his their paycheck. sandwich and leave. Yeah, you can see him taking his paycheck as he walks off in the last shot. <laughs> it's it's like in decade, it's like all the writers he meets, they're writers, but they get, didn't get the actors. But with this one, they get the actors, but none of them are writers. Like there's always an element missing. It's yeah. 
it's fucking frustrating. Even after, like, all the stuff is done, they're not like, oh yeah, I was Kamen Rider O's. They don't even mention that stuff. It's just... Yeah. Like, yep. is, is this the one, or is the next one the one where, like, the rider right before he loses his power or whatever, like, he's fighting two monsters... And he loses his power, and the two monsters are still standing there. That's Gaim. After he loses his power. That That's the next to Gaim. one. <clears throat> yeah, that completely ruins the theory that, like, if there are no riders, the threat goes away. Yeah. So what the fuck happens to the world? Invest should have ravaged the Earth by now. <laughs> yeah, Helheim should have <laughs> obliterated the planet. <laughs> yeah, go- and even going off of, like, the end of Gaim, Helheim should have been somewhere else. Uh, like, you know how, how are Fuck they getting you. thrown in Helheim if Helheim is in some fucking planet, like, a million miles away? I'm oh. gonna go ahead and guess nobody in the writer's room had this discussion when they were writing no. the show. They probably no had chance. this discussion, and then they just, they had that, you know, there's that webcomic where the they're talking to the board member, and then that one guy speaks up and he gets thrown out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that guy exists, for real. I think uh, everybody in the boardroom was like, well, we'll just... What did they have in that show? They had the, the forest through the zippers. Let's do that. Yeah, fuck it. Zipper forest, let's do it. Zipper forest. <laughs> I'd imagine they're under some serious time constraints for, like, writing yeah. these episodes and producing them and getting all, like... But... Toy shit, yeah. Making excuses for the show to be bad because they're in a tight spot is really, like, you don't, you shouldn't have to do that. The show should just be good. You know, regardless of whether they're in a tight spot or not, the show is still doing badly. Yeah. And not only is the show doing badly, but it's constantly self-aware of the fact that it's doing badly and why it's doing badly. (laughs) With all the point fives. It constantly takes time during the point fives to be like, man, why are we doing this? Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? Why are the writers doing this? Why do we have so many writers? Yeah. Why do we have so many directors? See, I I have something to say about that, uh, that 10.5 when they're talking about all the writers and directors. Did anybody else find it was weird when they were talking about all the writers and directors that all of them were named Alan Smithy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, Did anybody else notice that kept. weird shit? I got that joke. Thank you, Jeff. It's okay. I'll explain it later, Tomas. I'm here for you. Thank you. <laughs> Tomas is 100% right, and the, the point fives tell you how they fucked up but they make the shows themselves make no effort to fix the problem it's like yeah. they're proud of it it's it's they they they're proud of it or they just don't give a fuck anymore yeah is it selling toys are kids buying toys uh, then who gives a fuck well i yeah. don't think it's selling toys who knows if this series is popular <laughs> didn't, didn't well, someone speaking, speaking of not knowing whether something's <clears throat> popular or not somebody sent us a tweet um, saying that if the new season of Super Sentai doesn't do well, that they might cancel it. Really? Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I heard that. And I, I was also hearing something similar from either one of you guys or from someone that tweeted at the That's our Twitter crazy. account that something similar was might be going on with Geo. Like the toy sales mm. might not be doing as well. And so maybe they might consider something along that avenue for Kamen Rider. Mm. Well, they're not, like, considering canceling Common Rider or anything. They're just, they're considering, like, a revamp. Mm. Well, I mean, a revamp like, would be appropriate, considering that this is an anniversary series and they're going to be doing something new. Hopefully. Uh, just, hi, anyway. and welcome to uh, Ultraman Radio. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your one-stop shop for Ultraman things. I don't know, i got to start watching Ultraman now. I would, I would rather watch Space Sheriff. Welcome to we'll just space go sheriff back to the eighties. The space sheriff <laughs> podcast, <laughs> or we could just we could just go the other direction and just watch Gundam. Garo keeps coming out with new shit, new I spinoffs. Have been to That's watch true. Garo. Garo is great. I love Garo. You like how we have day. to keep this interesting by not talking about Geo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 if I can pull it back to the episode ten. I mean, if you must. <laughs> if I must, let's talk about Geo in this Geo podcast. Um, this episode it was all the more painful because it kind of gave me hope, and that was that Gates moved out, which was something I really. Why are you oh. so easily fooled? He just Damn. wants that inter inner writer conflict. <laughs> he wants, but like, 
He no, just no, no, wants no. plot development like all of us do. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love when writers fight. I'll, I'll accept that fault about myself. That's just something I like to see. It's not a fault. That's just something you like. It's something I like. Uh, but in this case, it makes perfect sense because the writer's talking about how he, it's, yeah. I gotta kill you before you become the king, but I'm also your roommate. So in this episode, <laughs> he moves out. That like some like slice of life manga. That sounds like a great comedy. He's moving up and I'm moving he, out. He moves he moves out in this episode and I was like, "Oh, finally he's going to be like an actual like adversary, like he's you, fucking you are supposed so to be." You're so easily fooled. I know. Like, as soon as he left, I was like, "He'll be back next episode." I it's, was wrong. He he came back the episode after next episode. Yeah. How about that for a twist, Jeff? <laughs> Got uh, me. <laughs> but it's it's so frustrating that the show seems to have uh, such a, a marriage to its status quo, and the status quo is dumb, and, <laughs> and yes. I, I don't like it. That's my favorite it's... part about the next two episodes as well is that everyone telling Gates like, "Yeah, I guess you should kill him and stop being a bitch," and he's like, "I'm not a bitch. I'm a big boy," and he doesn't <laughs> do it. He just goes back and lives with him it's, again. It's just so sad that there's no character growth in this series. <laughs> like Sogo is. I don't know. I don't think anything has changed for him since episode one, other than... He's not a character. He, There's no character to grow. He's learning yeah. what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think Liam hit the nail on the head there. You have to have a character in order for your yeah. character to grow. You can't You can't make a plant out of nothing. Right now they're just yeah. watering the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's just dirt. No yeah. seeds, just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't this growing? What's going on? Yeah. It's, Maybe it's the next... So go... They're watering it with Brondo. Like, oh, I mentioned that, uh, like, when we were talking earlier. I don't think you saw that. I nope. think it was irrelevant. Anyway. Sorry. S- Sogo, uh... Stole a joke. <laughs> Sogo We've never done like, that here before. We've never stolen Brain a damaged? Like, he's not the normal, like, uh, happy-go-lucky, like, uh, innocent type of protagonist who just doesn't understand the world he's in or whatever. He seemingly understands things fairly well, but he's so brain damaged and that he just goes at it entirely backwards. I think it's supposed to be endearing. Like, oh, he just rushes headlong into whatever it's situation not. life hands him, but his his lack of personality and he seems he's always certain that things will turn out for him and shit always does turn out for him. He hasn't faced any real adversity, it feels well, like. He told A.G. Hino that he liked him twice, so of course A.G.'s gonna give him this powerful artifact he <laughs> Man, this guy really likes me. I better get him a present. Shit. What do I have in my pockets right now? <laughs> Hope this kid if likes this kid this watch. I got this magic watch. <laughs> if I give this kid this watch, maybe he'll go away and stop looking at me like that. You know, you know what would make a good episode is if, like, this guy, he comes, like, whatever rider they happen to do next, Blade or whatever, and he's like, yeah, oh, is that a ride watch? I had one of those, like, six years ago, and maybe it's in my attic or something. I don't know what I fucking did with it. And they have to find it at the dump or something. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they spend the whole episode them. just digging through the dump. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, a wide shot of the dump, and someone yells, I think I found it. Oh, and then no, it's no, right just next. a regular watch. No, no, no that's, that's just the script it. for this episode. Oh. I oh. <laughs> That's a good, like, question, though, right? Like, think think of yourself in this situation. You find a hunk of seemingly meaningless plastic on the ground somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, A, toss it in a bin somewhere, or B, carry it with you forever and always in case you need it? Yeah, put, like, it in, put it in a little uh, holder on your uh, on your belt for. <laughs> go down for to the years. corner store and grab a quick link and just throw it on there. And catch literally it to your shower with it. Even if even if you do decide to hold it and cherish it forever, I've lost shit way more precious than a watch toy. <laughs> like it it happens. I don't know. Maybe these riders are just more competent than I am. Here's the thing, though. Right? Is like. If I was looking at a dongle, a plastic dongle that had a face on it, the first thing I would think of is not, this is a watch. Exactly, yeah. It doesn't tell time. <laughs> it's not shaped like any kind of watch I've ever fucking seen. It's just a circle. But they all know. They're like, oh, I found this watch. Found this watch. Yeah, it doesn't have a strap or hands or anything, but... It's it's yellow bug eye 30 right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, wait, no, it's 2007 right now. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> really isn't useful after a year, but... <laughs> Oh, I like this it's, watch. It's it tells year me what clock. year it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, ten was not the worst offender, though. Yeah, no. no. So let's yeah. let's move on to Common Rider Geo episode eleven. Let's let's not talk about episode eleven for a while. Uh, so this this is this is the episode it's when the you one. turn it on. You got to remind yourself that you didn't miss an episode. Um, I honestly had to. Um, Geo, it, the episode opens, and it's just fucking right in the middle of a fight. Geo's fighting another guy. Gates is stuck in Helheim. Uh, God Coda appears and tells Geo, he says, Look, your friend's stuck in Helheim. You can't do it alone. You have to seek help. And uh, have trust Geo, in your friends. Yeah, Geo Yeah, for is some like, reason, uh, Coda is trying to convince him that he needs like his friends to act on their own will. And it's like... He does. Does he understand the fact that this guy is also trying to kill him? Like it's it's. He's I mean, like you must. Here's the here's the number one question what? that I have right out the gate. It's a question Tamaz also had. Why the fuck does Coda care? Yeah. Uh, and, what does he have to do with any of this? Because uh, he's God. <laughs> yeah, he's Kamisama. He's Kamisama. He's he's the god of a planet. A million billion light years away. He knows when yeah. you are Here's sleeping. A... He knows when you're awake. <laughs> Here's a legit question for the dais. Okay. Um, I'm is Tama he Deus? actually God? I don't know. They keep calling him that in all the crossovers. <laughs> he's a god, maybe small g. He he's yeah, Kamisama. He's, he's they god call him Kamisama. Like, he has god powers. He can appear to people in their dreams. Look. Evil Piccolo's good half, King Piccolo's good half, is God. Kami something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's God, I don't know. But, uh... I'd buy that. Yeah, fuck it. So he says, look, you have to seek help to fix the situation, and Sogo says, does that mean I should find help from a friend, or does that mean I should go three days into the past and get my former self well, to help me? Coda's advice is actually really jumbled and doesn't seem to be what Sogo does. <laughs> he, he says like you're acting on you're like acting on your own will and not allowing your friend to act on his will. Is that what an overlord does? Yeah. And Sogo's no like fucking idea. That's Sogo <laughs> interprets that to be I need to go three days in the past and make two of me so that I can give a, a second dongle to my best friend who's it's in Helheim. The most fucking convoluted plan. Why didn't he just get two of them? It's, Why didn't he just go back in time and get two of them? It's some real woman of the beginning advice shit where it's like, no shit, that's not what I meant to say. It's getting all distorted. <laughs> um. Meanwhile, in 2018. Uh, Gates is just walking around the streets because he has no home now, and the time jackers stop him, and they're like, "Gates, you should join us because now we're we're both trying Schwartz. to stop." What? Schwartz. Stops Schwartz. Him. They're like, "Gates, you should join us because we're both trying to stop Sogo now, or we're on the same side, right?" And Gates is like, "Fuck you, <laughs> I don't like you." And uh, <laughs> Sogo, well, you got to look at it from Gates' point of view. The guys are like, "We're on the same side because we want to get rid of one overlord and replace it with another." Right? Same thing, right, Gates. Much. Yeah. I am glad that you've given Gates your angry dog voice. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. No, that's what he is. He's like an angry little puppy <laughs> with a man's body. He's got a collar. And a baby's on. head. He does have a He's collar. Got... <laughs> he does. Holy shit. It's it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so Sogo goes out to find him. He says, "I gotta find my best friend Gates, so he can poison my breakfast." And uh, Woes comes into the the clock shop, and he has an actual clock for Gates's not Gates Sogo's uncle to repair Clock Man. Un uncle Clocks and future Sogo uh, comes back, and he says, "Hi, I'm Sogo. I'm back." And you don't know, by the way. You're not told at all that it's future Sogo. You're just left to make it really obvious that it's two different Sogos because they're wearing He's wearing shirts. a different shirt. Yeah. And they wait like ten minutes to make the obvious known. And it's 
every single person that's watching the show just goes, yeah, I get it. Future Sogo, he's like, oh, um, my favorite dance troupe, Team Baron, They're, the members are disappearing, and they've been disappearing since 2013. We should go and investigate today. <laughs> how the fuck is that still... Uh, how's the dance troupe still around? I don't know. They they were the most extreme and intense. So they stuck around after all the others stopped. Yeah. Did you see their very light calisthenics they did on stage? <laughs> <laughs> their dance routine that has not evolved at all in no, five it's years. It's the same one from yeah. six years ago. <laughs> it made, and, uh, made my heart explode. <laughs> The Team Baron guy is this the like the leader of Team Baron is another guy, and we're we're like shown a little demonstration because a guy accuses him of being another guy, and he like throws him into Hellheim, and closes the portal. So Gates is there. Gates Gates shows up and confronts another guy, and another guy retaliates by throwing him also into Hellheim. And while he's there, he meets Kaito, who's going to be so useful and interesting in these these two episodes. Incredible about strength and strength. And how strong you need to be to change. It's pretty much fate. like late Gaim Kaido. He stands around talking about strength a lot with his hands in his pockets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Play uh, so cool. he, he turns his head up at you and then looks down at you so that you know yeah. that you're beneath him. He, uh, he dances so fucking good. He doesn't because he doesn't damn it, dance. he had a hard childhood and you don't know what that's like. His Both tr- of his parents his fav- killed themselves. Favorite yeah. tree got cut down. His favorite, <laughs> his favorite tree that his parents hang themselves from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, you mm-hmm. forgot. We all did. It was uh, the same tree, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Whoa. It's canon. Uh, Sukiyomi goes home and sees the original Sogo uh, leaving to go find Gates, and the future Sogo comes back, like running back, and he, she's like, "Oh, you that just- sentence." Made me want to not do this podcast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is really kind of convoluted. Uh, she's like, oh my god, Sogo, you just left wearing a different shirt, and then you're back. And he's like, yeah, sorry, uh, the Time Jackers gave this guy power after he was kicked out of Team Baron, and since then he's like throwing everybody who gets in his way into Hellheim. And then future Sogo leaves, and then old Sogo comes back, and Sukiyomi is like, he tells him a bunch of stuff that future Sogo did that past Sogo, present Sogo didn't do. And he gets confused. Oh. And then I get confused. And then she notices their shirts are different. And is like, oh my god, it's there's two Sogos running around. That's the only explanation. Yep. Newt Gunray pops out of nowhere and says, no, there are two of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in fucking Hellheim, Kaido lectures Gates for not having the balls to change fate and kill Gio. And uh, that's 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 pretty much it. That's all they do. I could not yeah, talk about them for the rest of this. that's all they do for two episodes. Yeah. They do continually pop up. The, the show switches over to their point of view as if it's important to the plot. Yeah. And Kaido yeah. talks about how <laughs> our everybody's favorite tiny puppy dog man is a bitch. <laughs> you, and he's right. Mm-hmm. It's like, stuff's happening, and they're fighting another guy, and then it'll cut to the forest, but like, you can't change fate. And he's like, yeah, I can. And then it cuts back to, <laughs> to Gaim and shit. It's, Pretty much. Also, the that. cinematography while they're in Helheim is terrible. It's it's intentionally well, crazy. The, the Helheim is just hard to watch, because it's like Bigfoot's out-of-focus forest. <laughs> not only that but they they had a shot where they split the frame in thirds like horizontally yeah and then yeah. slid them in different directions and you're just like what the fuck are you doing I it's guess crazy in this forest they want to make it like it's insane it's an alien forest where the screen splits it's, it's crazy uh, it's the instagram leave, leave those forest. effects for when the <laughs> leave those effects for when the common writer pulls out their sword and splits the screen in half Man, uh, fuck, speaking of split screens, fuck that thing in the next episode when Woe's oh my god gives his little speech with the split screen, like, flying all around oh, him. That was terrible. I couldn't even watch that. Uh, um, I thought it was alright. I, I couldn't Jeff. really focus well, on actually, what no. was happening. 
Actually, no. When Woes gives his speech, I didn't think it was all right. When yeah. they're transforming at the same time, I thought it was all right. Yeah, yeah. It's just Woes' head in the middle looks dumb. With their, the, the, the screen's like all like flying around him. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I, I just, if I you to... want to skip talking about 11 and just go to 12, I'm A-OK with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's do this by the book, Jeff. Let's do it by uh, the book. We do have harsh bylaws. Yeah, they'll fire us <laughs> if we don't. So, um, president, wouldn't Sogo. want that. Yeah, yeah. Do we? <laughs> we really need the paycheck. Yeah, yeah. I gotta support paycheck. <laughs> you, you get one of those? Wait, you guys getting paid? What? <laughs> oh, um, I actually just pay myself. <laughs> oh, makes sense. <laughs> Uh, That's our budget here at Rider Club Radio. You have to pay yourself. <laughs> uh, present Sogo, meanwhile, regular Sogo, he he goes to uh, a Team Baron concert and he confronts another guy and they have a big fucking fight and future Sogo shows up and they meet face to face and finally you see that there are two Sogos. What did you guys think about episode 11? So if if uh, team team Baron leader guy who's actually another guy, right? Yeah. If Sogo would have jumped out and transformed into a robot monster and attacked him, uh, <clears throat> he would have got away scot free with everything he did. If he just would have not turned into a monster too. Yeah. Well. All he had to do was go. Oh no, a monster's attacking me! I bet this is the monster that attacked all the other team Baron members. Oh yeah. Oh my god. You know, and he would have got away with everything. Yeah. You know would be better if that fucker wasn't another guy and it was Mitchie who was another guy. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> you know you know what would have been, been better great. is if I love if, that too. If Kaido was another guy, so he played any sort of role in this episode mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, why not? Also, apparently Kaido has been in Kaido and all the other members of Team Baron have been in Hellheim for five years. And, and they th- have not turned into Invest. No, and they, they haven't eaten. Yeah, there's nothing what are they to not eat? eating? What are they drinking? Piss. Where are they sleeping? Piss. piss. <laughs> they're drinking piss, and they're eating Helheim fruit, and they're not turning into Invest because but, plot. It's, the trick is to piss If you just eat the it. tree bark. Yeah, the trick is to drink your own piss, and then piss it back out, <laughs> and then continue the cycle. That's what they all learn there. Um, but it, it just it's like... It just shows kind of a lack of thought in the writing. I guess that's kind of a lot of Geo, where like it, it's it feels like nitpicking, but it really speaks to like a lack of effort put into the writing. When like the entire plot of Gaim was like, people can't live in Helheim. Like that's the problem. Helheim's gonna take over Earth, and people can't live there. So and, we designed this whole belt system so that people can survive in Helheim. Yeah, and this this episode is like fucking. They just live there. Fuck you. Just shut up. They're just there for five years. Just. Also, it's, his it's clothes just... aren't dirty. No, <laughs> his cl- he'd be naked. He wouldn't have his clothes anymore. Fuck this. And it's it, just, it's so lazy. And it's not even really nitpicking. Bad. It's just, you try to figure out, you know, the extension of what the story implies. And you can't piece a single detail together because nothing works. Like, it's not, it's not even one of those things where, like, oh, I realized it later. Like, I was watching the show, be like, how is he there? Like, if you think about it more than not at all, the problems start to arise. <laughs> it, the problem also comes in because, like, this is an anniversary series that's supposed to be celebrating these series before. It's supposed to be like a callback. Like, hey, remember Hellheim? Yeah. Remember all the things it could do? We don't. It's, it, it, you know, in it's... the end, of it it feels like a like a Disney ride where it's like, just here's like some images that you know, but like nothing behind them really. <laughs> These are like, things I know. <laughs> X-Wings, R2-D2, ATSTs. It's just Hellheim. Like, Hellheim. Star Invest. Destroyers. <laughs> Dance Team! <laughs> it's just like... Kumon like, Kaito! Like here's here's a show and here's a picture of Gaim, and uh, that's that's it. That's what you get, asshole. They like, just put a still, uh, like a still frame of Gaim on the screen. Like MS like, there you go. In there. Hey, look, Fuck Coda you. just dropped oranges on their head. You remember <gasps> oranges? He works at Droopers, but we don't have the set, so you can't go inside. 
<laughs> I didn't think about that. They could have just got like a cardboard cutout, like they used for fucking Philip Phil on stage shows. <laughs> just a cardboard cutout of <laughs> Coda, and just like had it like attached to the basket, and t- had somebody behind it tilt it <laughs> to dump the fruit out. Oh no! You yep. guys notice that Coda also isn't a rider. Also, no, he's not. He's Nobody both- has great hair. He's God. Oh, his hair is fantastic. He does have great hair. He's both he, God. He's and, also God. He's God and not God, though. At the same time, isn't that great? Just, and also, isn't none of great? that is explained to the audience. It's like he's is he God on weekends, and then during weekdays <laughs> he comes to Earth to work for Droopers. Like, what the fuck is this well, his situation? His universe is being destroyed. Right. God and needs he's inside. money, and you need to <laughs> donate now. <laughs> <laughs> Oranges aren't cheap. Yeah. Oh no, he lives inside of like the glitch space now because it's being destroyed. But he's God, so he lives longer. Because he didn't have enough money, <laughs> couldn't it's pay true. rent. This is what happens to real God, like See? the God from the Bible. <laughs> if you don't give money at your church, yeah. See, what happened to Coda is he went to that other planet with Mai, and then he fucked up and established an economy. And he's like, "Fuck, I need money now." <laughs> I'm gonna go back and work at Droopers. <laughs> so put your money in the collection plate so God can keep the lights on. <laughs> That's what you do when you go to the toy store and you're buying your Gaim toys. They bring around the collection plates so you can give your money to God, Coda. <laughs> There's just a little ticker next to next to Coda and his throne, and it just ticks up an extra day. <laughs> uh, Mai is not in this episode, even during the God parts, because uh, she was smart enough. To not come back. Yeah, she read the script for two seconds. She's uh, she's too busy Coda being Japan's by. second best ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least uh, it's a busy it, position. I hear. There's actually a possibility that she just didn't even get the script because they didn't write her in. Because they just yeah, that's true. Sure. That's likely. Actually, that's much more well, like, likely. Coda's actor Gaku Sano was like he got the script and he was like oh shit i only have like five lines H- how much are you paying me? <laughs> I i'll be, be on, back yeah be on set for two hours and make like four weeks pay like yeah fuck that yeah i'll take that maybe that's this why it sucks yeah maybe that's why the show has terrible <laughs> writing because they're paying all the <laughs> returning actors <laughs> i mean that's that's definitely a, like a big roadblock that this show is probably facing because you have to write so much of it around like who can we get back for how long that's what true. Are the who knows what like? these uh what these actors' contracts look like. Yeah. I mean, a lot. most of the money for this show has to be going to the returning actors. Probably, Because you yeah. think about the budgets for, like, the crossover movies, and those movies all suck dick. Yeah. Because all the budget's going to the actors. That's and probably what's happening with Geo. Especially actors like like uh, Gakusano, who actually has kind of a career after Kamen Rider. Like, he went on to do other stuff. He'll, he'll probably demand a higher fee now to come back. Like, it might be rougher... He did some great acting in this episode, though, when he was like, Oops, I dropped my orange! <laughs> a, a true Oscar moment, when he dropped the two oranges. <laughs> a single tear. <laughs> Fuck this show! Oh I can't God. believe how little he mattered to the plot of this episode. He doesn't though. do shit! Like, he's he's God. He's God, he says a riddle. You could say that about God any character says a riddle. in any episode of this show. I can't believe how little this character mattered in the plot of the episode. I think I'm just frustrated more than anything that they finally got to a writer show that I really liked and did a two episode like arc about it too. They didn't they didn't skimp and it sucks. It fucking sucked. Yeah, I'm the, so disappointed. The Forze arc would have sucked if it didn't have Fies and uh, oh yeah, Kaiza, Kaiza, and Fies rescued that arc. I I'm, the, I'm really nervous for what the uh, Ryuki arc is going to be because it's a bad trend. Yeah, I can't. This is definitely these last two episodes have definitely soured my expectations for the rest of the show. And they weren't really that high to begin with, since I didn't give a fuck about any of the main characters. <laughs> it's, I'm it's waiting toughie. to see if they get anything right yet. Because so far, they haven't really gotten much right. I to mean, the point where I can't even remember what the previous episodes have done correctly. There has to be some good episodes coming. Maybe? <laughs> so. Just just by law of averages. <laughs> <laughs> like... Uh, Geo up till up till like say last month up till last month, 
it was like, oh, this show's not that good, but there's like, here's a good episode, and like, here's a good episode, but like, overall, it's not a great show. But I'm, I, I'm willing to say right now that I, I, I don't like this show. Like, overall, I don't like it. It's, yeah. it's more bad than good, and it doesn't I seem think... like it's gonna get better. The thing is, the first 12 episodes of Blade are That's bad. True. They're weird. And then it becomes pretty good. But there's so no... there's still that chance. <laughs> so you're there's saying no... there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I want a scene where uh. Gates falls to his knees and says, Dude, my, my Karida is gonna borrow borrow. And then we see a really <laughs> shitty fucking <laughs> Sony Vegas effect of his body breaking apart. What? I thought you were he saying, dude, the... my car, and I'm like, are we doing a dude, where's my car crossover? No, I no car, I want to He's, his body is going to break. Dude, where's my car, Oh. They don't use the video toaster to do special effects in Kamen Rider anymore. Not they anymore, upgraded. No. They, they <laughs> upgraded to the video microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Eleven is um, frustrating. In is a good way to put it. Yeah, it's a bad episode. So now that we've covered that, we'll go ahead and move on to um, episode twelve of Geo. Liam, take it away. Okay, here we go. So uh, keep it Sogo. snappy because no one here wants to talk about it for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going as fast as I can, but they're really convoluted. So <laughs> future Sogo appears. Like, they're, they're meeting face-to-face at the dance stage, and he explains all the stuff. Oh, I'm from the future, I misinterpreted advice from a god, and I've come back from the future. And uh, they go back to the pit. This is, and I'm going to interrupt you because I, I can right now. Go for it. Because you're yawning? <laughs> yeah. The, the immediate thing that jumps out to me here is, and I'm not like Tamaz, I'm not like hung up on all the time travel shit. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck you is. too. I totally but, am. Uh, so much love flying around here. They they straight up say several times like you could cause like the universe to be destroyed or you could cause like a cataclysmic problem with the time stream, but it just doesn't Thank for God. seemingly no reason. And at the same time, you're just like, bitch, what about you, huh? <laughs> so, well, I mean, she never hugged her own self from the past. No, this, 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 but she she dipped money out of an iPad into someone's <laughs> hand in the 16th century. Yeah, she messed with the world economy in the 16th <laughs> century. Well, the thing is, in like time travel lore, the rules of time travel that are shared throughout most time travel stories... If you come in contact with yourself, it will unmake reality. The time stream will be irrevocably broken. Uh, In in this, they say that, but it just doesn't happen. They just stop saying it at a certain point. And then Sogo hides behind himself. Sogo hides behind himself. Can you imagine if they meet and they smash together and create a quantum singularity and that's the just fucking end of the show? It's just like the fucking end of Time Cop where they just like fuse into a single amorphous blob being and then fucking explode and that's the end of Geo. (laughs) Maybe Sogo has to go to alternate timelines to kill himself so that one of them can be left. (laughs) It's like like, like the one. Oh, he I goes and Jet Lee's himself yeah. in every fucking dimension. I love that movie. It's that movie's so terrible, stupid, but I love, but I love it. it. Oh, God. So, does that mean the, and there's going to be a future episode where he has to go back in time and be like, oh, shit, I got to do that, right? Okay. I want to, yeah, I want that. Yeah. I forgot. We have to remind ourselves in the past so that we remember for the future. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Look, I would love for them to be, be like, Hey, Ted, weren't you supposed to, like, remind yourself about that? <laughs> wow, dude, you're right! I almost forgot! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that was today. Um, so they go back and... So they go back to the pit. He says, yeah, all you have to do right now is get the ride watch. My plan is proceeding. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Uh, I, there's a, a thing where Gates is talking to Kaido. It's the same shit. Uh, we go back and Woes and Schwartz decide to team up. They're like, "Oh, we can help each other." Because yeah, even though they have absolutely no goal, well, they, again common. they want to yeah, get nothing. Uh, what's his name back on track, right? Sogo. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, Schwartz doesn't want Sogo back on track. Schwartz wants Sogo to fuck off. Oh uh, well. Whatever. They both want Gates dead. That's yeah, that's that, what they that's, have in common. Yeah. There you go. So. 
they're like, oh, we'll we'll team up just just for a little bit, and uh, they they Sogo goes to Droopers, and he meets Koda there, and Koda's like, hi, I'm Koda Kazuraba. You might remember me from such TV shows as Common Rider Gaim, 2013. And he looks right at the camera, and that's it. That's that's pretty much the extent of his dialogue. That's his whole line. <laughs> that's it. And uh, he doesn't fucking. Oops! Do I dropped my fruit. And yeah, he doesn't. I'm gonna, gonna breathe on the camera now. <laughs> he forgot to mention his appearance in Heisei vs. Showa. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like he doesn't. He's like, hi, I'm Coda, and like here he is, kids. And then another guy shows up, and they have a big fucking fight. And Coda says, "Oh, you use these ride watches. Take mine." And he gives him the the Gaim ride watch and like a watermelon one. And uh, before he can use it, though, Schwartz appears, and he takes the ride watch, and he throws it into Helheim. That is their grand plan <laughs> that Woes and Schwartz worked on together for this whole time. They were, like, working at a fucking blueprint to figure out how they're going to defeat. <laughs> and the the big plan was take his watch and throw it away from him. The plan should have been, hey, where does he live so I can stab him in his sleep? Like, that would fix everything. Uh, but it turns out that our hero planned this the whole time. Plans within wheels within plans. Uh, he throws the watch and uh, the watermelon watch like turns into a little mini watermelon. I, I kind of chuckled at that. I'll it was funny. That yeah. was, it was cute. I got a laugh. It looks like it's going to be all huge and it zooms out and it's like a tiny little robot. And he... I, I do always like that joke. That there joke were... always lands for me. Yeah. There and were there, actually... There was... There were a couple points, I forget exactly where. I'd have to rewatch the episode, and I'm not doing that. Uh, in, <laughs> Never. In 11 or 12 somewhere, where I legitimately had a good laugh at something, and I can't remember what they are. I, I'll i tell you, uh, there's one part in this episode when Sukiyomi takes out the Fi's phone, and she's like, Sogo! And both Sogos answer at the same time, and she's like, fuck, this is so annoying! And one of the Sogos, like, <laughs> that was, like yep, all the that music was it. stops, that was and he's it. like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a funny little part. Um, but, uh, fuck, what was going on? So Schwartz throws the watch through the portal. The watermelon chases after it. Turns out Schwartz knew where they were because Woe's told them, even though the time jackers seem to always know where they are and what they're doing. They're, this time, they're like, how did you know? They're too and, busy uh, Woe's time told jacking them. off. He's t- <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Woe's that's how it told them. And Sogo is such a great, perfect, awesome guy that he's not even mad at Woe's. Um... So the present melon, I hate this part, the present melon robot finds Gates and connects with the future melon robot that's still on Earth to make a video call to Gates. Gates has the watch, because the melon picked up the watch and brought it to... The, the, the present melon picked up the watch, the present guy watch, brought it to Gates in Helheim, present Gates... And then had a video so call. So what did you guys think about episode 12? <laughs> <laughs> and they have a video call, and Sogo says, bring the watch back, Gates, this is your duty. That's his plan, to get Gates to come back. Just ask him really nicely over video phone. And uh, Gates says, okay, I'll bring it back. Um, and this, Kaido says, hey, you can probably jump through this big zipper that I never tried to get through. Uh, if you ram it hard enough with your motorcycle, you can get through it. So Gates uses his motorcycle, he rams through it, Sogo has a fight with another guy in the abandoned warehouse in the edge of town. Gates flies through a portal it's through a zipper. conveniently placed right in the warehouse outside of town. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Gates comes out right in the warehouse. And he gives him the guy watch. Uh, Sogo uses the guy watch. Future Sogo goes back in time to 2013. And he uses the guy watch. And they have like a synchronized fight. And then uh, they beat another guy. All the team bearer members return. Gates moves back in. He brings the chicken. Everyone's happy. The end. Why do you even need to fight the present one? Won't won't like the past one just kill it and it'll just be yeah. I don't fucking know, and I don't care. And there's, then at the end of the episode, present uh, present Geo will have to go back, or present Sogo will have to go back in time in order to complete the loop. Like once he goes back in time, it, it should have just like disappeared, like at that instant, technically. So there's, there's a lot there's of shit in the show episode. that should work like that. <laughs> That's the Terminator rule, yeah. There's a moment in this episode I wanted to highlight, which I feel like by highlighting it, I'm highlighting the problem with a lot of Kamen Rider writing. Okay. Writing and writing in general. How there is none of both. Kumon Kaido. (laughs) Kumon Kaido walks through the portal. He's been trapped in Helheim. 
for five years. Yeah. He walks through the portal with his hands in his pockets and goes, Phew. Uh, in anything else, literally anything, fucking Sasuke Uchiha walks through a fucking portal. He's been trapped in hell for five years. He'll have at least a little bit of an emotional moment. He's finally escaped. No matter how much of a blank slate shithole character it is, no matter how cool they think they are, there would be a moment there where we as an audience member could, like, understand them a little bit. Mm. But uh, Kaido just walks through and goes, hmm. Yeah. You know, his his top priority. No strength here. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well I mosey any on. muscles in this room. It's His top priority is kicking that guy out of his dance group. Like, immediately he gets back after a five-year <laughs> tour in hell, and he's like, better, better clean up my dance gang. That's his well, that's, top fucking that's priority. That's just like a microcosm problem throughout a lot of common Rider, and I mean, no matter how, like, dumbed down a children's show is, the characters still emote when things happen. Even if Like, it was... when fucking Big Pete steals Mickey Mouse's hot dogs in Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Mickey still goes, oh no! Whatever. <laughs> you think he'd at least come back and be like, oh, thank god, that feels good, I'm gonna have a cheeseburger or something, but no. Something. Not even literal like... cyborgs in Kamen Rider are this <laughs> emotionless. Like, <laughs> there should have been a moment where he walked through and and like maybe he looks out the window or like up in the air and he sees the sun for the first time and there's just a moment where like the the camera stays on his face while he looks up at the sun his dumb fucking emotionless mug but we as an audience get from the juxtaposition that he's happy to finally be home uh, but we don't even get that no <laughs> Earth. He is not the main character, but the main character also doesn't do anything emotional in the whole episode. So. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen. It would have been cool to see, like, if if when Gates tumbled into Hel- Heckheim, Heckheim, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, he just stumbles upon like a, a just beaten old Kaito with like a beard and shit. A, a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. wearing Kaido's outfit. Skeleton. Or he's got like one it's, of the. Uh, mass it's Robin produced... Williams and Jumanji. He has one of the mass produced yeah. uh, Sengoku drivers. He's just. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the Kurokage. He's just been alone there. Yeah. And then he's like a crazy old prospector. He's like, hey, how's it going? Well, like, his hair is perfect. He's got no yeah. beard. I haven't talked to a human being in five years. <laughs> <laughs> And he starts uh, making music on his on his alcohol bottle. <laughs> his mouth harp, right? What, did he bring a bottle of Jack with him to Helheim? <laughs> I mean, I He would. made it out of his piss. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta store the piss. <laughs> um, shit, I hate these two episodes more than anything because they made me feel like a fool with episode 11 when I started it up. And they're making reference to past events that we as an audience haven't seen yet because they're actually future events. Like, that's the worst, is when um, Geo is, is, talks to God Coda and he's like, he looks just like the guy that gave me the ride watch. And then it shows a flashback to a fucking event we haven't seen yet. And uh, Woes is like, as we last left our hero, he got the Gaim ride watch and is now fighting another God, guy. that confused the shit out of me. I was like, wait, 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 that's, that's, like, I get, out of, out of order storytelling can be really cool and interesting and fun, but this, the way it's done here is so clunky and awkward and really confusing, this I, arc, I can't stand it. You can say this bad, arc it's is okay. Like, this arc is like they tried to do in medias race <laughs> storytelling, except we're already in the middle of the story. Yeah, it, it just feels like they're skipping ahead in the middle of the story. Yeah, Common Rider Geo is not Memento. <laughs> yeah. And it never will be. It needs to accept this fact. It's, I know the writers are trying so hard to make it exactly like Memento, but <laughs> they're failing horribly. <laughs> I just, I can't stand it. I can't stand any of these characters. Gaim Armor, we haven't talked about Gaim Armor. Gaim Armor looks insane. Yeah, I don't know why they had to put those little like mantis swords on the side. Why? They those shouldn't have been there. Why does he have like I get that you're supposed to have whatever dongle they used on your shoulders or whatever. Yeah. But why? Why did why do you have to do that? Cause because it looks really bad. That's that's what the 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 art team demands. 
That's it's why just, the that's why the Kuga ride armor looks so good because there's no stupid bullshit that Kuga used to you know, unless they like took the fucking like spear and gun and sword and like put them on his shoulders. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they didn't get that idea. Yeah, when Honestly, they were working on it. <laughs> Like, all the ride armors, well, not all of them, but most of them look pretty shit, because they're just really bulky and crazy, but the Gaim one is, I think, my least favorite one so far, just because, like, with, uh, like, x or with, like, uh, Forze, it's like, you have a bunch of shit hanging off your shoulder, but it's, like, a big chunk of shit, whereas with Gaim, it's, like, it's, like, wings, almost, like, they look like they're about to snap off at any moment, yeah. like, how are you gonna it, move and fight? If he takes a, if he makes a bad, like, roll, or something like that, there, he's, he's gonna wreck the suit. How yeah, like how are you supposed to choreograph a fight in this thing? It looks so awkward. Well, you just Here's you the just thing. make the finishing attack stepping backwards and then slashing. <laughs> yeah. When exactly. I looked at this, I thought it had to be based on something. Like mm. was there a t- like a type of armor during like the <laughs> that's that's too clever. state that's too period. Clever. You're you're giving them a lot of credit here. Well, it it just looks like it's based on something. Yeah, it it should be. For fuck's sake. I just don't know what. Like, I feel like there has to be some sort of, like, ceremonial armor. Maybe. Maybe. Like, maybe... Do you know how you see, like, samurai armor and it's, like, placed on, like, uh, torso mannequins? Yes. Yeah, it has yeah. pieces of it behind it? Yeah. Yes. Maybe that's what it's based on. Maybe? But it still looks terrible. It looks bad in motion, for sure, and on pictures. If it's based on anything, whatever it's based on also looks like shit. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I haven't seen it. It fucking sucks. Yep. <laughs> That's the official Rider Club Radio opinion. Everything <laughs> sucks that ever led to this. Everything that we don't know, yeah. Fuck it. I mean, that's my um, opinion a decade. Hey oh. Mm-hmm. I oh. Swish. Speaking uh, of decade. Yeah. There there is a part of me that wants to not watch the next episode and then Ghost. pretend like I did and do this. Yep. Cause that was I a hate fun that. time. <laughs> I had you, you I have fond memories of how legitimately angry Liam. <laughs> I'm sure Liam has fond memories. Yeah, fond, really fond. <laughs> you you come into my house and you disrespect the sanctity of the structure of this show. The sanctity of common rider ghosts. <laughs> the sanctity of this marriage. I'm really not looking forward to the next episode. Like, the double whammy of Ghost and Decade like, together. The thing about Decade is he's actually, like, a really fun character outside of his own show. He's, he's oh, a super God, really, guy. I like yeah. him. I, I hope hate his good. fucking show. But the thing yeah, is, like, he... this show has taken characters I liked and made them completely insufferable and unlikable, so I, I shudder to think what they're going to do with Sukasa. Like who, Liam? Give us an example. Like, Fize or Kaiza... Or uh, Baron. The, or the, the Koda. second episode of the Fies and Kaiza arc did was, do them dirty it, as characters. Yeah, they started okay, and then they kind of. But uh, Koda and Kaido, I love. They fucked them up. True. Uh, O's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> so maybe they'll make Sukasa the best character ever. For sure. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Apparently, he's just Agito the whole time. That's the only suit that could pull out of mothballs for this. Yeah. The the thing is, I don't want to watch Ghost. Okay. I don't want to see him on my screen ever. Me neither. You just, anytime he's on screen, just put your thumb up in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one time Ghost was good, and that was when he was in those Kamen Rider Drive movies. Oh, yeah. That's, that's true. When he actually looked interesting. Yeah. And acted ghostly and was like floating around and Turned shit. Turned invisible and stuff, yeah. Yeah, he's like, yep. It looks like um, Decade's gonna be working with the Time Jackers, which would be great. I would be That'd a be big fan of that. But if he was like, to... if he turned out to be the main villain of this series, that would be the coolest shit ever. Oh, that's way too cool for this show. <laughs> it would be really cool if Sukasa was like trying to take Geo's power because, you know, that's what he does. He takes other riders' powers as his own. Yeah. Wouldn't, and so he needs to take Geo's power in order to be complete. Wouldn't that be great if he was Oma Geo? Oh, fuck. Oh. And, like, his entire plan was to throw people off 
and th- to make them think Sogo was Omageo, so that he could <laughs> make Sogo collect all these powers for him, and then he could just <laughs> take them from Sogo. That'd Is that sick. too smart? That's way that too, too smart. smart for this show. That's way too smart. Yeah, and they wouldn't be able to get him back for that long. I don't. think. No, gonna... he's doing uh, Garo now. He's Jenga in Garo. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's dumb. who has his own series right now. So. Oh, that's what Jenga is? I keep yeah. seeing Overtime oh, yeah. posting that. Jenga was a villain in one Garo season, and then now he's the main character <clears throat> of oh, this shit. new season. He's, he's oh. doing well. I thought they were talking about Jenga. <laughs> yeah, they do play Jenga, Jenga instead of fighting every episode. So. Yeah. Okay. If Yu-Gi-Oh can do it, these guys can pull it off, I think. Maybe we should make this a Garo show until next year. There is that option for us to pull the plug on watching Geo and do something else. <laughs> but guys, I uh, I have I did watch all of Common Rider Amazon's season one, and that's a good fucking you, show. It is a great show. show. You are two seasons behind us talking about it, though. <laughs> yeah, we do need to watch that movie whenever it finally comes across the pond. Oh yeah. I want to see how they oh, end it. Is there it. an Amazon's movie? Yeah, it's supposed to end the series. I, I'm not optimistic oh. about it, but we'll see. It looks very toyetic, which I'm not psyched about. Yeah. Oh. Is there a lot of doodads? The, yeah, there's like the new writer has like doodads to transform, and uh, Haruka has like his he's even more robotic form. Don't don't say too much because I haven't started season two yet. Uh, when Haruka got his arm ripped off and he got the robot arm that oh, yeah, shoots rockets. Yeah, I love that part. <laughs> if Haruka wasn't the one that got his arm ripped off, you liar. It's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, anyway, we... Geo sucks. Geo sucks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Can we I mean, talk about... It, uh, There's still hope. It ain't worth it. There's still hope, There's but still hope, not a yeah. lot. Not a lot of hope. And it's not ghost level terrible. No, it's like not wizard yet. level crappy. Yeah, yeah. I I put it somewhere around. No, at least I don't. I don't know. I feel like at least Geo is trying. I feel like Wizard didn't even really try after a while. It was just <laughs> kind of complacent with its not going anywhereness. Maybe there'll be a tertiary, tertiary writer that just makes it better. There, there's a problem I'm running into with doing like the splash images for these episodes. Who the fuck am I going to put in this episode? You're just going to have to do a Geo form, maybe, or a Gates form. Yeah, I guess I will. Pick your favorite one. They suck. So they I don't suck. Know. Pick the bulkiest, put, uh, ugliest one. Just do the Kuga one. Just fuck it. preempt the movie. <laughs> Maybe I'll do another Kuga as my image. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Jesus. No, I'll just about... do, like, a minimalistic picture of a fucking character from Halo 1. <laughs> an elite. And just put it on there. Just just recolor it a bit? Just call yeah. it another Kuga. Can we talk about that movie-exclusive shit that got dropped this week? The, the Kuga sure. in double forms and another Kuga? Yes. We learned, we learned about um, all the little tidbits... From, if you don't want spoilers for a movie that you're not going to watch, skip ahead to time code, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Or, or a movie that you're going to watch two years from now. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Kuga features Let's heavily be honest here. in the film. And uh, so, of course, our main character, Geo is going to get a Kuga form, mm-hmm. uh, which we got some photograph, photographic evidence of, anyway, this month. He's given a thumbs up. And it looks fucking great. It looks way better than his usual armors. Yeah. It's stupendous. Yep. It looks... doesn't look like he's wearing a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> it looks better than any suit in Geo at this point. It's really good. Uh, it should be the official form. On the other side of the pendulum, we have the double form. <laughs> Which, where he is wearing a refrigerator. <laughs> you know, Double is very famous for having split down the center, one side one color, one side the other. That's Double's deal. Mm. Uh, instead of carrying that throughout the whole body, he's literally just wearing a chest piece. Yep. With the biggest pauldrons this side of World of Warcraft classic. <laughs> He's he's not going to be able to walk through any doors with that thing. No, it's you can you can see the design philosophy where 
they're like double. Oh, what's his gadget? The Gaia memories. So give him huge fucking Gaia memories on his shoulders. But then they're like, Kuka, what's his gadget? Oh, he doesn't have one. Well, I guess he just doesn't have shoulder pads then. Fuck you. He's just just little ones. <laughs> he gets to be gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor uh, poor double armor over here is like, hey, what was the whole thing with double? Everything was like W's. Yeah, let's make his fucking torso a W. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his head is the middle of the W. <laughs> I love it. If there's a decade form with... The- would they just put, like, cards on it? Uh, there is a decade form. I've it's seen coming. scans of yeah. it. It is probably the most hideous form in this entire show. It's quite Does bad. Does it look like uh, Kuga's uh, final form? Or not Kuga's final form. Decade's final form? It's, he's it's got, reminiscent, like, the, I guess. Kinda, He's actually. got the Pokemon card binder on his face he's, or whatever. He's got a card for a face that can change. Oh. Fucking Geo's decade form's face is completely flat. Yeah. Like, it's just a flat box. It looks dumb as <laughs> shit. Uh, but it, we're talking about uh, Heisei Generations Forever. Mm. Uh, we got to talk about another Kuga, the villain of the plot. Oh, my God. Who, as I mentioned earlier, is an elite from Halo 1 for the Xbox. He really looks yeah. bad. Looks terrible. He's got his Waspinator from <laughs> fucking Beast Wars. His face he looks, looks like so CG. much like Waspinator. It's crazy. <laughs> he looks like CG that actually came from Kuga in 1999. Exactly. It's... Yeah. I hope he talks like Waspinator. <laughs> <laughs> Waspinator. He looks fucking <laughs> terrible. But like, look, he looks like a World of Warcraft classic design, <laughs> honestly. Uh, All this stuff is bad, guys, I get it. But aren't you glad that they got our favorite Kuga back, Yusuke Onodera? Well, that is uh, unconfirmed, yep. sir. Is that is that unconfirmed? It's a rumor? I, I do a lot of um, searching around on Instagram's search feature. They give you, like, a feed of related things that you've, like, related to things that are related to things that you've looked at before. Yeah. So I get a lot of Indonesian, Singaporean, and Filipino posts I get about that Kamen Rider. Because yeah. uh, Kamen Rider's much bigger in those places than yeah. it is here. Uh, so I don't understand any of the text, but through context clues and translators, I uh, have gathered that Onadera Yusuke from Decade is going to be the Kuga that comes back for this film. Oh, no. I do know 100% I mean, that has been confirmed that Joe Odagiri was given a script for this film, and he turned it down because he, quote, hated it, unquote. <laughs> Wait. Rightfully so. You're telling me the script for a Kamen Rider movie is bad? <laughs> <laughs> Say I can only so. imagine that Joe Odagiri is like, man, I dodged a fucking bullet for not coming back for these fucking movies. Yeah, you know what? As much as I would like Joe Odagiri to come back, it's a solid career move to not do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's totally in the right. <laughs> like, he he does actual like dramatic film roles. Like he's over there Tom Hanksing all over the fucking place. He's not gonna <laughs> yeah. come back for this. Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, he's gonna be Japanese Mr. Rogers. If you're gonna bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna bring him back, that movie better be fucking Shakespeare, pretty much. Uh, Maybe they could bring him back for the Amazons movie because Amazons is probably more of the quality that uh, Joe Odagiri would show up for. Have you? If they if they pay him. Have, have you guys ever seen, seen Tokyo? Have you guys ever seen the Sorry. episode of Reboot where uh, Megabyte becomes like a super virus? No. No. Uh, Another if Kuga I did, looks I've like that forgotten. episode of Reboot. Oh, I've seen that picture. I know what you're talking about. I've seen the picture of him. He gets his long ass legs and his arms. Yeah. Off. yeah, 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 yeah. He looks like a CGI character from the television series Reboot in the year 1994. Hang on, that's, have, you, that's... have you guys seen the movie Lawnmower Man? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> What about that CG I abomination? He looks like oh, that God. level of CG. Well, not really. He looks like a PS1 character. <laughs> he looks like a PS1 CG, not like in-game. Like, yeah, they, like, they drew this up and they put like six weeks into developing this character. Like a Tekken 1 cutscene, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you go to fight another Kuga on the overworld map of Final <laughs> Fantasy VII, and he looks like a gross little block monster, but then in the cutscene, he looks like this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is not good. <laughs> I'd, I'd honestly rather have no uh, Kuga at all 
than have Yusuke on Adara coming yeah. back. I'd rather just have no I one. I could agree with that. Or just I have mean, a silent person in a in a Kuga suit. Yeah, fuck it. It's it's better than bringing back, you know, the proper Godai Yusuke and then just having him be a different actor. Yeah, uh, oh god. The That's fact true. that they're bringing back the side character they made up because they couldn't get Joe Odagiri to stoop to a level so low is okay. There's something poetic about mean, that, isn't it? That they couldn't yeah. get him for decades, so they replaced him with this guy, and then they couldn't get him for Heisei Generations forever, so they just replaced him with the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's it's like poetry. It the, rhymes. The actor that plays Onodera Yusuke is just sitting by the phone with his fucking fingers crossed, like, Joe Odegiri, don't take it. Don't take it. Don't take <laughs> it. It's just the second choice forever. Oh... He's uh, he's the <laughs> it's main like whenever you of, um, Kanpai after Kanpai five. Kanpai after five. Yeah, he's the main character in that. He's really good in it, honestly. I gotta see it's, after five. It looks really funny. It is really funny. It's like if you went in for auditions and every time you got a part, except you only got understudies. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Uh, eh. Poor bastard. Yeah. It's not his fault they wrote a shitty character. <laughs> yeah. No. It's just his fault he took the part, I guess. It's not his fault the script is ass. His fault he needed money. Like, here's the thing, right? Everybody always talks about, like, oh man, it's a fucking travesty that Joe Odagiri wasn't in Decade. But could you imagine Joe Odagiri playing butt monkey ass sidekick to Decade <laughs> for the whole show? Oh. That, that would be turn terrible. That would turn it down so fucking fast. <laughs> yeah. I would have hated that. That would, that would definitely ruin the whole character. Yeah. Is there, uh, is there any other news, Liam? Monthly uh, not, news? <laughs> not off the top of my head, no. <laughs> We're all tapped out, huh? Yep. All right, so let's jump into some emails we've got. Let's hear them. Our, oh, my God, this is so long. Uh, our first email <laughs> is from <laughs> Nishka. Long-y. Who's from who? Nishka. 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 Who says, hey guys, so Geo has had a decent chance to prove itself, and personally I think it's been a solid middle-of-the-road series so far. Not Ooh. great, not offensively bad, but with the high bar set by x and Build, there's no way an anniversary series was going to have a chance. It's just a mm. constant stream of nostalgia, and I'm okay with that, though next year's season will need to do better. I don't know if I agree with you. I, 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 I definitely that agree I that agree. next year's season will have to do better. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a constant stream of nostalgia, except it's more like projectile vomit. Uh, yeah, I I'd say it's near middle of the road, but it's just below middle of the road. It's, it's veering off into a bridge impuntment. <laughs> yeah, if, if middle of the road is at fifty percent, I would say that this show is at like a thirty-five percent for me. Yeah. I'm yes. not enjoying it. it. Like I didn't get as mad as Liam did during the last two episodes, but I really <laughs> was not digging them at all. No. Uh, he continues. Speaking of nostalgia, isn't it great to see Dan back in a villain again? No. <laughs> no. It wasn't. It was <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Nishka. <laughs> uh, I hadn't even considered taking characters from one series and giving them powers from another, but it worked. If Geo can pull off a few more surprises like this, it should at least keep the series from falling into a rut. If, I would rather neat. them keep doing that, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was I, neat, and it's it's a it's a good idea, but like many things with Geo, the good idea leads to a poor execution. It's, it's, the show has a really interesting concept that's really fun, and has great potential, and the writers are just not good enough to make use of that concept, unfortunately. It's, that's true. Or they're just not given the opportunity to make use of it because the directors keep changing. Yeah, that, that, that could also be true. Yeah, it, I mean, too many, too many cooks, you know. <laughs> true. Too many, too many people trying to sell toys. Yep. Aside from Dan, who is a legend, is there anyone else you'd like to see return who isn't a primary or secondary writer, but a villain or lesser character? Obviously, I'm still pulling for another Agito. <laughs> but I think some of the more selfish Ryuki writers could be fun. Zolda from the start of the series seems like enough of a prick to be a king. Let's bring back scissors. scissors. I was just about to say. <laughs> have, him, have him appear and then die in the same episode. Like a yeah, really have horrible him get death. Eaten alive, yeah. yeah. I he was just dies say... with horrible slurping noises. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say Sessord. 
Oh from, yeah. Oh yeah. From yeah. Kabuto would be perfect to come back and be a king. I fucking. I feel like the if anyone, design. if anyone, um, if anyone of you guys wanted someone from Kabuto back, I feel like you'd say the bee. Oh well, yeah. Well, the bee is like three different guys. Fucking the bee. Oh. At least four whichever, different guys. That that gives you options. Whichever actor you can get back. All That's right, true. Isn't the official like isn't like the official the B uh, the same actor that played uh, Goro in Ryuki and he, no. what's his name he, in Gaim? He, uses he, the he like does once. become the B, but nobody yeah. stays the B for more than a couple episodes. Yeah, mm. he actually only becomes the B once for one scene. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so the, technically, I, also, I saw his. I saw his actor in um, Amazon's, which was neat too. Yeah. It's too bad he was a fucking murderer. If if anyone's um, like an official the B, it's it's Yagaruma and Kagiyama, the guys yeah. that become Kick Hopper, Kick and, Hopper Punch and Punch Hopper. Hopper. Yeah. yeah, I would like Kick Hopper to come back. He was he was a really fun actor. He could come Fuck back yeah. as the B. Yeah, why not? Uh, I know there was a lot of. Um of that creepy fucking doll in the background of some of those episodes, but I'd like to see Dr. Maki. That would be fun. I fuck, or, <laughs> or, or, uh, what's his name? Kogami, the cake boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did actually get a kick. He's not necessarily a bad guy, but... I did actually know. get a kick of, out of Woe's saying happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. When he transformed. I, gotta, yeah. Um, I would want to see, they haven't done Blade yet, I want to see, um, fucking Mutsuki. Come back. No, why? Because <laughs> I hate him. He could be a good villain. That's true. I found I I get like when I was watching uh, Blade through, I got what you guys were talking about. Where like at first I was like, oh, like that's an interesting concept for a character. And by the end yeah. of the series, every time he walks in screen, you're like, fucking Motsuki, just get the fuck out of here. Just shut Pretty up. Much. Pretty much. Ultimate <laughs> bitch. You really start out like liking the character and wanting to see where he goes, but after like a few episodes, you're like, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> just, just, just shut up. The show is better before this piece of shit showed up. <laughs> what if there's another wizard arc where Phoenix comes back from the sun? And he's like, sup, bitches. I oh escaped. man, <laughs> I I would actually like that. I would because you know there's the whole what happens when the writers lose their powers and you know right. they weren't able to do these things and it's like what the fuck happened to all the villains or revolt somehow finds a way to split the worlds back in two and it's like yo I'm back that's see that's what i was thinking max is they especially with these movie writer thingies happening they're not going to have enough heisei writers to fill a whole series so they're going to have to revisit like shows yeah. or just stop doing it. So I wonder what they're gonna do. I don't know. I I revisited some episodes of uh, Build because I was just feeling like, man, I like a good common writer. <laughs> and I was watching some some p- bits and pieces from the episodes, and I, I rewatched some of the last you know arc of Build. And I forgot that in the final moments of the final episode of Build, uh. As I'm remembering the main character's name. Fucking, I don't remember either. Man. Sento. Oh, fuck! Sento. Sento, Sento, thank, Sento you. thank you. Sento <laughs> picks up uh, a ride watch when he lands on the new planet. Yeah. Which means, canonically, the universe that they landed in was the Geo universe, which means there's no Evolt? Yeah. I mean, he's he's stuck between worlds in, in the space vagina. The space vagina. Of I would like Gills to come back if his suit hadn't been obliterated by moths. <laughs> it would have. To I be... would like. I would like uh, G three X and Hojo to come back and like the squad. Oh fuck yeah! Oh, I, I guess it really minutes. depends on. I guess it really depends on who you think the secondary writer of Agito is. Because yeah. I think it's G three. For sure, it's G three. Gills is the, the Gills is the tertiary. I would use like the, the primary writer. Fucking G three. I hero. love G three. Yeah, absolutely. I would love if like G three appears and he's like, "Oh, like G three? Do you have a watch for me?" And G three's like, "Nope. I have the individual pieces of the armor that you have to put on yourself, <laughs> asshole." That's, that's what G three is. Just clip it on yourself. I would say um, Eternal would be really cool to come back as a villain. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good choice. He had, like, a fun story. It wasn't fun. He was, like, a child soldier, but still. <laughs> it had a very like interesting story. story. <laughs> or, uh, what about, like, Heart or something? Oh, that would be great. I would love oh, yeah. Heart and Brain and Medic or to come Chase. back. 
I would especially love Medic to come back. <laughs> yeah. Medic? Medic. Medic. <laughs> Look, Medic is probably, I would say throughout all of Ryder history, probably the hottest girl in Ryder. I'm yeah. just saying. Really? Medic would be happy if Medic came back. That's right. <laughs> Anyway, yep. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on that, that was, note, uh, moving off of that one. Speaking of Ryuki, I finally reached it in my Rider Marathon, and I Ayo. think I can see why Liam loves it. The characters are great. Oh, we're back in the email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the characters are great, their motivations are very nuanced, and that theme, god damn do I love that theme. Yeah, I love Ryuki's yeah. theme song. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, drinking it's an entire cool. bottle of rye, it just gets you ready for a fight. <laughs> Whoa, I can't say I uh, have experience with that <laughs> Thankfully, uh, Earthly Subs just finished scrubbing the rest of the series So I'll be spared the horror of TV Neon Thank, thank Jeebus Oh, I did just, I saw that uh, a couple weeks ago And I threw that on my, my external I was watching the, the retranslation that Heat Metal was doing mm-hmm. But he stopped on like episode 24 or something Yeah, thank, Someone... thank Kodakun Someone just fucking came out recently and just here's the blah, here's the whole show. So that's really cool. If you want to watch all yeah. of Ryuki. So yeah, head on over to Earthly Subs. Yeah, check that out. So since I'm on a Ryuki kick, I thought I'd ask a fun what if Ryuki question. The four of you are in the Rider War. What would you contract? Any creature, character, animal, whatever. What would your wish be, and would you happily kill the other three? I'm just going to assume Liam would contract a pug. Have a good one, Nishka. <laughs> as much as I'd want to contract a pug, I don't think it would make a good fighting partner. It's true. It'd probably just try to lick your opponent. I'm yeah. going to have to contract with a tortoise. Okay. And then Soul be steady. like the defensive rider. Have like a big ass shield that I bash people with. Uh, I'd pick a, a bear. I would contract with a bird. Like a sparrow. Uh, I would contract with a praying mantis. Oh, that's a good one. Shit. What would your yeah, wish like be? Dual scythes. What would your wish be? Ooh, yeah, what would your tough. wish be? Oh, I wish I didn't have to watch Shio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if wow. you kill the rest of us, you, you get that wish no matter what. So. That's true. That's true. It's, it's uh, I difficult. guess I have to watch Geo then because I can't kill any of you guys. I love you too much. Oh. Yeah. It's difficult, like, what would your greatest wish be? That, like, it would be worth going through all of this for? Reveal, uh, reveal the darkest corners of your heart on this Common Rider podcast, uh, Jeff. Uh, I just, <laughs> since I picked the bear, I figure that my character would be pretty dang lazy. So I would just, like, wish that I'd never have to work anymore. You'd be, I like, wish for a billion vajillion dollars. Yeah, I could I'd, just, like, lay around all day, do I'd, nothing. I'd wish for an entire plate of Hot Pockets. Uh, why? <laughs> well, know, Hot Pockets like, are okay. I like I Hot no Pockets. Problem. But, uh, as in Office Space, they say, or that one character says, you don't need a million dollars to do nothing, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would do if I won the Ride War? What's that? Two chicks at the same time. <laughs> My brother's Jeff, broke. Don't do Jeff, shit. You don't need to win the ride war to have sex with two chicks at the same time. You do when you, you look just like have me. To be attractive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're quoting a movie, Tomas. I know. I know. Uh, I was quoting it too. We're, uh, I don't know what my wish would be, but I would probably I don't see myself murdering my friends and also a bunch of strangers for it. So I'm gonna have to go with no. It really depends. If I was like Knight and I had a really deep personal tragedy happening to me, I might. But uh, none of that shit's going on in my life right now, so I don't. Th- I don't think I could kill these guys. The fact that you have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the edge lord of the group, after I mean, all. Yeah, that's my brand. Uh, Tatakai. Tatakai. <laughs> Tatakai. Tatakai. So, Max, would you kill us all? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. My motivation isn't really all that, like, it's not much of a conviction, I guess. I would kill all of them for a box of Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> next email. Marty! Can you guys guess who our next email is from? Jake the Snake? Yes. Welcome back. He says, Man. hey RCR, 
Thank you a ton for making me honorary fifth host. I'm really honored and appreciate this. I can't thank you guys enough. You don't get paid. Uh, you definitely <laughs> don't get paid. <laughs> I actually hadn't watched True Ending yet, so big thanks for the commentary track, too. It was golden for you. and the best motivation to watch extra material I can think of. Uh, You're happy welcome. Dad Hero, Zaku Ninja Mooks, Enjoyable and Tolerable Dan, and Dangerous Zombie in the Rain was a fun watch. Shame the second half of the movie got messy. Yeah, I mean, all those Ratter movies are always... Here's just all the CGI budget in the last 15 minutes. Yep, let's just uh, uh, pull the trigger and vomit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, he mentions that the full version of Over Quartzer is out, and it's pretty sweet. Oh, I want to listen to that. I actually, I actually like, like Over Quartzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. good thing. Over Quartzer's pretty good. It's catchy. Oh, there's there's one thing we didn't really talk about. He mentions that he digs another Gaim's design. He's a sucker for broadswords. What do you guys think of another Gaim? Oh, another like Gaim's it. fucking sweet. Yeah. 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 One thing I really appreciate about um, the series is that a lot of the uh, another writer's designs just look great. They really do. Yeah. Uh, I loved like I don't think there's been another writer design that I didn't at least like a lot. Did yet. you did you like X Aids? Yeah. Okay. I did like <laughs> X Aids. That, that was that my own predator fall. design. I think it's it's kinda weird that the another riders look better than the ride armors. Like by <laughs> yeah. far. I, I wish that they all had that thing that the uh the build uh, uh the another build suit had where like the eyes open up and do crazy shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I like cool shit. <laughs> he also mentions that when both the main and secondary writers are not that enjoyable, I can't help but smile when they get chewed out, burned by the other characters in universe. For Gates, especially during episode 11, I loved Schwartz and Kaido dunking all over him. <laughs> I love Schwartz, too. I thought that was hilarious. I thought Schwartz was painfully unfunny in his point five, though. That's oh, like some Japanese God, humor I just terrible. don't get. It was, it was. I even mentioned that to Max after I watched it. I'm like, Jeff's gonna say this is exactly the kind of humor that he just does not jive with. It was it's true, for sure. I was just like, he's, why is this supposed to be funny? I don't get he's just it. Being a goofy man, making funny faces. What's not to like? The thing is, like, I really, I didn't like that point five either. I really loved ten point five, mostly because they just left the bloopers in, which was my favorite part. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Where they go to the last line and, like, uh, Gates accidentally calls Sogo by his actor's actual name and they're like, fuck. And they just don't do another take. They're like, fuck, just end it on the blue. Fuck you. I, I really dug that. I thought that was funny. And I think the other ones haven't been as funny as that so far. I think our fifth host has a really good point that's going to deliver us from the evil of ghosts appearing next episode. What's that? Deliver What's us, that? Jake the Snake, from every evil. <laughs> if there's one good thing to take away from the fact Ghost is going to get episodes, even though Gates already has his ride watch, it means that we might have drive episodes. Ooh. Hopefully they can get Shinosuke, Go, Chase, or at least some of the SCU back for cameos. Uh, uh, what's his name? Ryoma something or other, Shinosuke's actor. Oh, Ryoma he's, Takanuchi? Or Takanuchi? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's doing so much shit right now, I... I He's I'd in a really ton of shit. He really he is. Come back. I love that yeah. guy, though. He was a Such great main song. character. Apparently, really the, reason, the reason why they did that with Ghost was because they didn't anticipate that he'd be available. So they just said, oh, fuck, just give him the Ghost ride watch right away. And then he turned out to be available later. So they said, okay, we'll do an episode. Hopefully that's the same with Drive. I imagine they just said, okay, no one from Drive is going to be available, so fuck it, just give them their watch right away. Maybe they'll just find some space. Either him, either Shinosuke or um, uh, Go Go would be cool, too. Maybe they can bring back the chief, the captain of the of the SCU. That'd be fun. Or uh, what's what's that uh, detective? Bring back on. The detective's name that's Again? like all Gen. bumbly. Gen. Gen. Yeah. Would be great. Q or Gen and Rina. Rina. Like Anyone? again, I would really love for Gen to come back, and also the detective from Double that has the bike scratcher. <laughs> I would just love those <laughs> two. Know? Yeah, Geno they have and to solve Gen a crime together to go on adventures together. I would love that. They they are buddy cop material. Um, question two. He does a little bit of Gaim spoilers that I'm not gonna get into because we also just spoiled something. And by we, I mean me. We love Gaim. I love Gaim. 
Question two, probably a question mostly for Jeff. I wanted to ask which among the villains of My Hero Academia do you guys find enjoyable? I really like how the series has interesting characters, not only among the heroes, but the villains, too. Have you guys uh, watched any My Hero Academia or read any or anything? Nope. No. Nope. I know some of the heroes just from like their designs and powers, but I don't know any other names or anything. From Osmosis. Yeah. My favorite villain from My Hero Academia is Sasuke Uchiha. <laughs> That's my favorite, too, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Well, who who's your favorite, Jeff? Let's hear it. My favorite is Fash the Stampede. It's uh the hero killer stain is my favorite because really he kinda has a point. Like oh. his whole idea is that like being a hero is a job now and nobody mm. really cares about protecting people or doing like the real hero things. So he becomes uh like a villain so that he can kill heroes that aren't real heroes. Oh shit. So that yes. only <laughs> Clever uh, motivation for a villain. Yeah, he only wants there to be, like, true heroes left. So he's become the hero killer in order to do it. Dark. And he's got, like, a that cool... Sounds... He's got a cool power, too, where if he um, touches... If he gains any contact with your blood in any way, shape, or form, he can control you. Oh, shit. Oh. His motivation sounds kind of like Eileen the Crow... The Hunter of Hunters from Bloodborne. Oh, yeah. Hunts Blood Drunk Hunters, yeah. Sorta. Kinda. Little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, he, he finishes out his email, as always, with thank you and looking forward to the next episode, as always, Jake the Snake. I think that Fire in the Ice hero guy looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. The his... guy who has, like, half-burnt face. Todoroki is his name, and he's great. He's in any other anime series he would be like the insufferable highborn character that looks down on everybody. Oh. Uh but he actually just becomes friends with the main character after their first arc and they're just friends. Oh okay. Well that's uh, nice. <laughs> um he has a PS uh from a tweet I sent out a while ago. Uh my most hated catchphrase has to be ghosts. And my f- most favorite catchphrase is Mox. The routine of poses he does with it adds a little bit of extra flair. Mm. I love Mox. Searching, Mox is really destroying. Good. Like Maha. his little, his little he, like, he swings his arm around like he's playing an invisible electric guitar when he's he's doing it. I love that shit. I do too. Somebody uh, here doesn't. No, I don't. <laughs> I like it. It's showboaty. He's you know, it's great. I love his showboatiness. It's when he lost it for a while is when I didn't like his character anymore. I'm glad he got it back eventually. And uh, I think my least favorite is listen to the sound of my Kokoro. Yeah, that's oh, really yeah. fucking bad. I will listen to the sound of my heart. Uh, I, I said this on Twitter already, but for those who don't follow us, even though you should, at Rider Club Radio on Twitter, you should follow us. Uh, my my most favorite is Who Cares, and my least favorite is fucking Decades. It makes no goddamn sense. It's cringy as fuck. I'm or just a I'm... passing through common rider. Don't forget it. It's it's awkward in English for sure. I'm just a passing through common rider. Remember, it sound good. What does that mean? Yeah. He he makes himself sound not important because he's just passing through, and he's like, please remember me. <laughs> he's like being cocky when he says uh, it too I'm, like, I'm a common Rider hobo just riding the rails <laughs> it probably has some other meaning in Japanese that's like poignant in, in the the regular language but uh, not not in English at all <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it my favorite rider catchphrase is I'm common Rider drive and you're coming along for the ride that one is really yeah, good. I love that one. So good. What's your favorite, Tomas? What's your favorite? I, f- I forget what I said my favorite was, but uh, if if I can have an unofficial favorite, it would be just Godai saying Daijobu, even though it's not really a catchphrase or like a transformation phrase or anything, because they didn't do that yet. Um, my favorite is Let's Go to Work. That is a good one. 
My favorite was actually... Dante. I said that mine was drives as well, but I think mine might be doubles. Count up your sins. Oh, yeah. It's a classic. Classic. Yeah, if I had to go with an actual one, it would probably just be doubles. Count up your sins, because I'm going to beat you up. It's my favorite (laughs) one. (laughs) Thanks for the email, Jake. We really appreciate you writing in. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Snakey. Our next email is from Swirly Jiffy. So swirly. He says, hey, RCR. Stirred peanut butter. Finally getting around to having enough time to sit down and send in an email. I know you guys are mixed on your feelings towards Geo, but I have faith in it. Mostly due to my weakness towards franchise anniversaries and a theme song that can't quite seem to get out of my head. I'm glad you still have some faith. Well, we're, uh, <laughs> let's keep on trucking. Mixed is a pretty I'm, soft word for it, but yeah. I, mean, I think I'm the only person that doesn't have any attachment at all to Overquartzer. It's really? okay. I think it's okay. I'm not big into it. I think it's cool. I was super into builds, and everyone was like, yeah, it's good. I'm like, no, it's great! Well, I felt that way about uh, X-Aids. Like, I was super into it, and everybody else was just like, it's pretty good. Oh, I love that song. The song is dope. X-Aids fine. I like, I like half of X-Aids' song. I like it all. Uh, we got some questions from old Swirly Jiffy. Question one. The last few seasons of Ryder have featured an overall more serious intent with a fair bit of humor sprinkled in. What are your thoughts on the possibility of a future Ryder series being more of a straight comedy? Ooh, I'm actually I, fine uh, with that. I, I'm fine with having a show that's just, like, here's, let's do something just really lighthearted and just fucking fun for a year, as long as it's not shitty. Yeah, it if really depends on what type of comedy we're talking about. If we're talking if, about, like, the hero Yoshihiko... Oh, like that type of comedy? Then fuck yeah, I'm all yeah, bored. Just but if we're it's talking like the about... same vein of like a, a Sentai series where they kind of have more lighthearted themes and humor, I, yeah, it'd be cool. If we're talking about Onari mugging at the camera, oh, oh yeah, no. then no. <laughs> if it's like if it's like let's do a comedy show that's like really self aware and kind of like makes fun of writer tropes from the past and stuff like that, I can dig that. Like. That sounds like a fun thing. That could, a Kiba that could, The more that you say that, the more I'm like, but that's what Geo's trying to do. No. And it just, it can't, it Gio's, doesn't. Geo's trying to it. celebrate writer tropes yeah, of Gio the past. Geo is not and... joking about the writer tropes of the past. They're just doing them. <laughs> yeah. They're just copying the yeah. worst parts of them. Uh, I think I would be on board for a comedy, but like... I. I'm going to have to put that big asterisk beside it, and it says it depends on what kind of comedy we're talking about. Yeah. Also, Any like, descent? what theme of, like, they're going for motif for the rider. That's true. It's like common Rider guns, where they just have all guns and they're shooting everybody, and it's a comedy. I don't know. I mean, it works for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> they don't do a lot of shooting in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they do do this thing that always fucking makes me laugh when at, like, completely inappropriate times, they'll pull out the nightstick and, like, extend it dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> it always, like, when the fucking microwave isn't working, they'll, like, knock it off the stand <laughs> and pull out the nightstick and extend it. <laughs> <laughs> um, question two... <laughs> <laughs> If you could take two different motifs or story elements from any previous writer series and turn it into a new series, what would you pick? Oh, let's take Ghost and make it good. What would we put it in? Ghost and uh, like Kiva, maybe with like an army of ghosts that are trying to take. I don't know. Ghost vampires. Ghost vampires. <laughs> <laughs> because so, ghost suits and stuff and motif is fucking cool as shit. Really cool, yeah. But uh, yeah, just turn it into a uh, shaman rider, like Liam wanted. We, we shaman. Had, oh, yeah. shaman. Jeff and I had a great it? idea for ghost. Uh, what? Do you remember when you said Ghost would be a ghost and Makoto would be the actual rider? And they oh, have to yeah, into yeah. One? Like, Ghost is his belt, and they have to, like, work together Yeah, in order to achieve anything. And they hate each other because that's more fun. I, I just think maybe having Ryuki and Ghosts 
ideas sort of like put together where you have to make a contract with a deceased person from history okay make it like an actual historical writer yeah and like every writer is like one historical character and they have to like fight each other for like to return to life maybe oh yeah like you when you die you like pair yourself with another ghost or something yeah make a deal with the devil like maybe like some some powerful being has created a purgatory and okay. the only way to escape is by, like, aligning yourself with a ghost. Satan? And becoming a rider. Yeah, like, Satan is the villain. <laughs> he was no, in, you, have, he to, was you in... have to make a contract with Satan, and then your common rider Satan's... Common <laughs> 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 rider Satan's? <laughs> you have to make a... It's, it's, uh... Fucking Dora Satan from, uh... Zoo Ranger. <laughs> he's, he's appeared. He's canon. That was the actual Satan. He was not Dora Satan. He was, was Satan. It was Satan, I think, until uh, he started working for Pandora, and then they call him Dora Satan at least once. I know. I think but it they is actually do, Satan. Actually, yeah. But it's, yeah, I it's... think Ghost and Ryuki would be my choice. I think it'd be neat to shove Forze and Build together. What with Forze's whole like going into space thing, and Evolt being like a space alien entity that's traveling the universes in order to gain ultimate power. And then have, like, an interstellar common Rider. That's true. Ooh. That'd be pretty fun. Just, like, do a straight sci-fi series. Yeah. That would be, be like really cool. Common Rider Star Trek. <laughs> I'd watch that shit. Uh, I am on board. If, if you want to get me to watch Star Trek, just put common Riders in it, and I'll check the it thing out about, at least. The thing about classic Star Trek... It'd be like Star Power Trek. Rangers in Space, or Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. <laughs> the thing about classic Star Trek, like TOS, is that it is straight up like a tokusatsu from the 70s. It's really? like the same exact shit. <laughs> With the rubber monsters and <laughs> yeah, everything. Exactly. Or the Gorn, or whatever it's called. The Gorn and the Salt... <laughs> The salt monster as well. <laughs> it's like the salt Gone. devouring monster. There's a salt monster. Yeah, it's like a it's a monster that feeds on salt and it like kills people by taking all the salt out of their body. Oh, that's horrible! Horrible. Yeah, it is. It is very horrific. Interesting. It's a, it's a good episode. The salt monster can also like take on camouflaged forms and look like people. Mm. So it's like a Devil Among Us type episode. It's really good. And just like uh, monsters from most of these Kamen Rider shows, they can just inexplicably turn into people to hide yes. amongst them. So the, the budget This one definitely can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to um, agree with Jeff and say Ghost should be more like Ryuki, because every Rider show should be more like Ryuki, but Ghost especially. <laughs> I just picked a Ghost and a good show and put them together and hoped for the best. Yeah. It, you can't fuck up. You can. Ghost can overpower the good show and make it a <laughs> shitty show. That's true. Oh my god, I it didn't couldn't expect be this. bad. And then it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any other choices? Uh, how about Ghost? But instead of Ghost, he turns into a dog, and he has to do ninety nine good deeds, or else he dies. Fuck yeah! I'm. Or all else he board. dies. Does he also play <laughs> basketball? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, That's green one of the light. Yeah. Hey, wait, we have we have our sports writer. It's a sports playing <laughs> dog. No, he gets he gets turned into a dog, and he has to master two thousand skills by the year two thousand, or else he. <laughs> How about? But hear me dog. out here. Okay. Hear me out here. He gets cursed to become a dog, right? Okay. And he has to do the two thousand good deeds or whatever, two thousand skills before two thousand. But the dog can transform into a common rider that's a person. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go on. But the the common rider is dog themed. Oh. oh. <laughs> Secondary rider, a cat trying to stop him from gaining his goal. <laughs> and it's not well, a person that turned to... into a cat, it's just a cat. Just a cat. <laughs> does does the cat have nine lives? Yeah, that's the cat's theme. Its power is it has nine lives. Well, I think we just wrote a show, trademark it, <laughs> copyright it, <laughs> print it. You know what will really suck is when the new series scans start coming out and it's about a dog rider and it sucks. Mm. Yep. That's what happened with Ghost. Yep. Um, question three. 
Do you guys have uh, you guys have talked about JoJo's on the podcast on more than one occasion? Do you each have a favorite part or stand? And have you been keeping up with JoJolian or the Part Five anime? Thanks as so always, I thought- and I hope the holiday season treats you well, Swirly Jiffy. Oh boy! Thank you, Swirly. I thought I thought he was talking about fried potatoes. Oh, JoJo's. Julianne. <laughs> JoJo's. <laughs> this is this is my favorite part of the podcast when someone lobs us an excuse to talk about JoJo for a while. Uh, JoJo's the the Trader Joe's knockoff of Oreos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> JoJo's. Is that Oreos, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yes. so, fuck. Uh, my favorite part is probably four. Like I love two, but I think four is my absolute favorite part. Uh, I like which one is four. Four is four Diamond is the one with Josuke that's in the high school. Diamond does not crash. Yeah, Diamond is not crash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like Steel Ball Run. I like Steel Ball Run, but I'm also gonna give uh, uh, an honorable mention to Part Two because I just fucking love Battle Tendency. I do love Battle Tendency. A or lot. Phantom. I think I like Phantom Blood a little more actually. I fucking, really? I, I adore Phantom Blood. Phantom Blood is good. Like I always, I love describing to people who don't know JoJo what Phantom Blood is about. Yeah. I always start with like, oh, it's like set during like the Victorian era, and this this kid gets adopt this street urchin gets adopted by a rich man and tries to ruin his adoptive brother's life by kissing his girlfriend, taking his first <laughs> kiss, and then he also kicks a dog into a fucking furnace and kills it. Yeah, and then shit. he finds a stone mask and becomes a vampire, and then <laughs> Jack the Ripper jumps out of a horse a horse's corpse a horse. A horse, <laughs> and he attacks the main character, who's buff as fuck and also has sunlight powers. Uh, I never finished part one, but that I did at least read all of that. Yeah, part part <laughs> one's a trip. Th- this is all new new stuff to me here. <laughs> yeah, uh, Max, you're not like a JoJo guy, are you? I, no, it's that's just fine. it's all osmosis, just like. You know, I, I only know about, like, part three, like a basic bitch. <laughs> I know about the stuff that appears in the cutscenes of the PS1 game, because it's pretty good. Heritage for the Future? Yeah, um, that's that's all, like, part three stuff. The part three fighting game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah, played yeah. the part three fighting game. I love that game. That game is fucking fun as hell. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Especially when you play as Joseph and get your shit wrecked because everybody has a million moves and you've got crackers. <laughs> I like playing as the dog. The dog is fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, Iggy? Iggy. Iggy. Iggy, yeah. Uh, um, so, I think it's just me and Liam who like JoJo. <laughs> yeah. I want to say I'm keeping up with part eight, but I haven't read it in, like, six months. But that means I'm only six chapters behind, so... That's true. I am not keeping mean? up with Jojolian. <laughs> isn't, uh, like, isn't there a part where some guy drinks pee? I don't I, remember. I think, I think I there might be. I know <laughs> the most famous part of Jojolian is that the main character has four balls. Has four balls. Yep. Oh. What? Four testicles. It's Why is that relevant? I can't explain. It is plot relevant. It is I can't plot tell relevant. You why, because it spoils it. Does unless... he. Does he get kicked in the balls with two feet? Yes. Is he a Krogan? You would He's have to kick him on the balls with both feet, or else it wouldn't do. <laughs> What's your favorite stand, Liam? Uh, sticky Fingers, by far. Sticky Fingers. Love Sticky Fingers. What about you? Um, shit, man. <clears throat> this is like the hardest question on Earth for it me. It is so hard. Oh, shit. I like... I like that Ticket to Ride kills you, but it makes you, like, really horrific looking first. (laughs) That's the best power. (laughs) Is that the one that turns you into wood and then makes the whole world come to you? No, it's the one that brings your insides outside Uh, and makes you, like... Oh my god. Yeah, it's fucking horrific. (laughs) I like the one that casts a rainbow, and when you touch the rainbow, you start to believe that you're turning into a snail, but you aren't really. (laughs) (laughs) What? What the fuck? Am I I really uh, hearing that, or am I, That's real. That's What? That's real. Well... Why? <laughs> that's, that's some either genius writing or some 
There's there's one Dementia that makes of it, a crazy person. There's one that makes it that you catch a flesh eating virus if you move down. So as long as you keep moving up, down? you won't catch the flesh eating virus. Yeah, if you move what? closer towards the earth in any way, shape, or form, you'll catch the virus. <laughs> oh, that's like the fuck? a bad version of speed. I'm I might have to go <laughs> You can never take an airplane. <laughs> as long as the airplane never goes down, you're fine. <laughs> just yeah. just stay up here. As long as the airplane lands on the mountain. If you climb a mountain, mountain, you gotta fucking live there. <laughs> if you take an airplane to Aspen, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I might have to go with the hand. Oh, the hand is a cool one. The ability to erase space between two points. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Sick. That sounds neat. The best part about it is uh, the character who has that stand is too dumb to use it correctly. Is the only reason why it's not the yeah. most powerful stand. It, it's like the strongest stand, but the the Okuyasu's a fucking, Okuyasu's so. a fucking moron, so he yeah. doesn't know how to use it right. <laughs> All you have to do is remove the space between someone's brain and their feet, and they're dead. Yeah, but yeah. he's an idiot, so he, he doesn't do that. This. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are all these crazy reality bending stands? That's the thing and- about JoJo that I really that I enjoy is like the the whole concept is that your power is you get a ghost that has a superpower, yeah, like uh, an extension of your spirit that has a superpower that you can use. But all of those superpowers are either like super specific or fucking crazy different. Yeah. Like, nobody has the superpower of super strength. Everybody has, like, what's, they can erase reality between two points. What's with that guy who has a stand that's just like a gun? What's with that? Oh, that's, um, that's either Emperor that has a gun where you can curve the bullet. I think he's, or, talking, I think he's talking about Emperor. Or Sex Pistols, which is like a bunch of guys that live inside of a gun that will kick your bullets in the direction you want to go. <laughs> I love JoJo. <laughs> there's, there's a stand that's it's a laptop and you plug it into a person and it impregnates them with a demon baby. <laughs> that does your bidding. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. I don't like there, any of this. Speaking of, a, speaking of a stand that can like, rewrite reality, there is a stand in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that even the writer of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure cannot adequately explain what it does. Are you talking oh, about oh King Crimson? God. I'm talking about King Crimson. Yeah. I feel like I'm having a fever dream right now. <laughs> <coughs> Did you see? <laughs> Although I will a shout out Tomaz to Emperor. is fucking dying over there. <laughs> <laughs> a shout out to the stand Emperor because the guy who uses it is a cowboy named Whole Horse. I love Whole Horse. Love it. Did you say you plug a laptop into you and you upload a baby? <laughs> it's, yeah? You plug it into a person and it impregnates them with a the baby and it's born that day or like the next day or something. Oh, it's like an evil wow. baby that attacks your enemies for you. <laughs> this is genius. Yeah. It's a really, really great manga. Oh. If you guys ever get the opportunity to read it, I strongly recommend it. Oh my god. <laughs> uh... So is can you do like a junior thing and and plug it into a man and they have a baby? <laughs> <laughs> they never try it, so no. I don't know. Don't don't give them any ideas. Uh, fanfiction.net is going to be all over no. that. It's Emperor. I'm sure it already exists. Don't oh yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, thank you for giving us a reason to talk about this for 40 minutes. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you that, Swirly Jiffy. Thank for making me laugh should, so hard I can't breathe. <laughs> we should do an episode where we talk about JoJo or something. I think it would probably just have to be me and you. Yeah, probably. Maybe just, we could introduce the other two to something. Have them like, watch over something. Laughter. Just give yeah. me some cliff notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll give you the, yeah. So our uh, <laughs> next email is from D Cake. Donkey. Donkey Cake. cake. Donkey Cake. Hey, RCR, how was your November? I hope it was good. It was, it was okay. okay. I yeah. didn't do no nut, so I survived. <laughs> I, I nutted quite a lot, so it's pretty good. Yeah. I played a cowboy game, and then I stopped playing a cowboy game. <laughs> I didn't even play any video games in November. I think I started another Mario Odyssey game, and that's Shit. it. Yeah, that's, that's all I did. It's a good one. I got Spider-Man. played a lot of Magic Arena. Oh, I played yeah. Spider-Man in October. 
Spider Man. Like, I played sick. the shit out of Spider Man in October. I really like that game. Yeah, I still need to play that second DLC. I haven't played any of the DLC. It's, it's got the best armor now, the the Spider Armor Mark One that makes you look like a disco ball. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing through the whole game with that shit. I can't believe that we're like two. Th- I think it's two DLCs in now. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's still no like standard black symbiote suit Spider Man in the I, game. I'm certain they're saving that for the sequel. Like the next one's definitely going to be about Venom or something, which is why Probably. they're holding it back because that's the most obvious choice. Um, uh, he why don't they just keep? Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. <clears throat> I was say, why don't they just keep on making DLC? Because it's not like they can make a, another Manhattan. Like, it's true. You know, It'll be the same, the same Manhattan. Map. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with the next one. Go to Queens. They'll just, in- they'll just inhabit it with like different shit. I guess it'll be the same Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. Brooklyn. Video games need to bring back expansion packs. Yeah. Just big ass DLC. <laughs> <laughs> just big ass DLC. All right. This year we added big ass DLC number three. B A D L C. Big ass mode. Just- Big ass <laughs> mode. Dude, I'd play oh, some Jeff Spider-Man all with big that. ass mode. You know <laughs> it. <laughs> um, after the O's episode, I kind of started to like Geo a bit, but that does not mean I'm giving it a pass for the weird storytelling. Also, with Heisei Generations Forever coming, I didn't expect the approach that they're going for, so my question is this. What do you think of Heisei Generations Forever going with the existential crisis approach, and how do you think the movie will play out? Thank you very much, Ooh. D-Cake. I, uh, I think the existential crisis isn't going to exist, and it'll be like 2% of the movie. If, I think they're playing it up for the trailers, so you'll be interested, but with stuff, stuff like that in Rider movies, when it's like, oh, here's this really interesting concept where, like, Rider's just, it's just a TV show, like, what now, asshole? That's that's going to be maybe either the first five minutes or the last five minutes. And I, I, I would love a Ryder movie where that's a big theme, but I don't think... I don't have faith in Ryder like, movies anymore. Even if they play it through the whole movie, here's what's really going to happen with this movie, and you can quote me on it. Okay. Don't yawn at me. It's going to be good. Okay. <laughs> it's not actually going to be good. The... Um, the whole existential crisis thing is gonna be done by a big old devil man, and he's villain. Everybody hates mm. him, and he's gonna take away Ryder and make it fake. But then the <laughs> writers are all gonna band together with the help of the citizens who believe in them, and they're gonna Ryder kick him, and he's gonna die. And then it'll all be just the plot. <laughs> that just sounds like the Lego movie. It's the Lego movie, but with writers. I didn't it's, see that movie, but I guess. It's gonna be a giant CGI dinosaur. Whose plan is to make riders fake so he can destroy the world? Yeah, you're probably right. Bring back General Shadow, please. Yes, make him the villain. Well, Just... It's probably going to be like Great Leader. It's General... always fucking Great Leader. General he's not. Shadow he's not going to be, be a piece of, of gum everything. with spider legs on it either. So I don't fucking give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> a piece of <laughs> gum. There was one the 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 leader of uh, Black Satan. The guys from uh, fucking Stronger is literally like a stick of Trident gum with some spider legs taped <laughs> to the side of him. And a little skull right in the center. He's really great. <laughs> oh, simpler times. Yep. Is there a Bazooka Joe comic can, like stuck to him? <laughs> oh, he, he has back, a skull yeah. attached to him is what it is. Yeah, oh, okay. his face is a big Here, skull stuck in the center. I'll, I'll the show gun. everybody how the sausage is made by linking you to this image. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's a stick of grape gum with a skull attached to it. So That's good. amazing. I love it. Like if he showed up like that in the movie and he was the villain, ten out of ten film. It's... It looks like it looks like a cat took a shit on a purple rug. <laughs> uh, so I don't think it's gonna play out well. Is my is my. <laughs> Nostradamus like prediction uh, for this maybe film. We're just, maybe <laughs> we're just the jaded. giggles now. Maybe we're just jaded from Ryder movies, but that's yeah, I agree. Does anybody want to go jaded on record? from Ryder movies is par for the course. It's yeah. true. Does anybody want to go on record against my prediction? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't really care what happens in the movie. There's also that. That is very <laughs> true. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the email, DK. I'm sorry if we bursted your bubble. <laughs> um, 
Our next email is from Don Piantis, <laughs> as it always is. Hi. It, it is our final email. He says, Hey, RCR. After listening to two Rider Club episodes about Geo, I find it funny how you guys would want Sogo to become more of an asshole because it's unbelievable this guy would become Oma Geo, but then he would end up basically like Sukasa. Decade. Yeah. I want him to be more yeah. like Sukasa. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an want, improvement over nothing, I guess, so far. I want him to treat people like his subjects. Like, Sukasa is stupid fun in all the crossover <laughs> movies. Like, yeah, I love is. it when he shows up. He's, he's I just don't like it in his own show. show. The only reason, and I'm just going to speak for all of us here, the only reason we want him to act like uh, like he's actually going to become a villain is because then it makes sense for him to have the character trajectory that he does instead of him having no semblance of being the person that he's going to turn into, which means the characters in the show that want to prevent this tragedy from happening don't have any incentive to do what they came there to do, which means no one has anything to do. There is one thing we didn't think about. In, in the episode with Dan, he's so stupid that he joins the villain to find out how not to be a villain. Perhaps yeah. he just accidentally yeah. becomes a villain because he's so stupid. <laughs> he just gets like ten layers deep and he just forgets that he's trying to not become a villain. Yeah. He, like he completely he... falls ass backwards into being the overlord of all time. Like, oh, whoops, I slipped and accidentally subjugated all of the world's governments. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> I guess I gotta go with it now. <laughs> I, I can't go back. Or I just look like a fool if I just said I was kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he continues. I was really surprised to find a new movie commentary from you guys. If you guys ever decide to review uh, other Tokusatsu movies instead of Geo, I'd be fully supportive of it. Maybe it's Me. too soon to decide. Geo might improve once he's done with all of the past writers, which is pitiful and irredeemable as an anniversary show at this point. Mm. Mm. He's, if, what would Geo even do? Like, what What would happen? He would fight... Uh, I don't know yeah, what the Yeah, that's the end of that sentence. He, he would, would fight. fight. He, he would have to... Either either they, they do a hard 180 and make it like a serious Geo and Gates drama, which is the best case scenario, or uh, they go back and do like an X8 thing where they're like, oh, we did X8 and now we're going to do... Uh, Genmu, and now, oh, we did uh, Gaim, but now we're gonna go back and do Ryugen, or like something like that. Like, who knows? I'm going to go out on a limb. Again, this is another one of those things you can quote me on. You can call me a dum dum if it turns out not to be true. Okay. Dum dum. Uh, the another riders are going to come back and be stronger, another riders. Oh, fuck off. And oh no! There's gonna be oh. some. The time jackers are gonna <clears throat> come in control of all the another riders, and their new plan, the one they meant the whole time, is gonna start. And then the big daddy. That sounds just stupid enough to be real. <laughs> the, the big daddy uh, time jacker appears two episodes away from the ending, and is the yep. real, the real bad. Guy. The supercomputer. And he and the, he turns into room. a stick of gum with spider legs. <laughs> <on it. laughs> That's the best case scenario. <laughs> Maybe uh, it ends early like Decade did. Uh, Who says it has to be 40-some episodes? Decade was like 32 or 35. It's true. Um, question one. He's got some questions. Question one. For those of you who have already watched Decade, would you guys prefer Decade over Geo? No more time fuckery. Uh, I'm liking Geo better than I did Decade at this point. I, I gotta say seen that. Decade. Decade starts least... out. Uh, the thing about Decade as a character is that his character is softened quite a lot in the movies and crossovers. In his own series, he's kind of insufferable quite often. And the entire point of the series is like my original character is better than all your favorites. Mm. Uh, and then there's no storyline yeah. in the series. The thing Geo has going for it is it's not spitting on all the shows that came before it. And I mean, there's there's obviously a debate to be had there whether Decade was spitting on the previous shows or not. Uh, I would be in the camp that it kind of is. Yeah. But there are people who think that the way they did it was, like, complementary to the previous series. I will say that the people who feel that way, in my experience, 
have always been people who started with Decade and didn't watch any of the other series um, first. Looking back at it with pink colored glasses. Magenta. With decade mask colored glasses. Uh, so would you guys prefer Decade over Geo? I don't know. Probably not. I haven't seen it, but uh, I I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's great. I mean, Geo doesn't have Onodera Yusuke playing <laughs> not yet. second fiddle. <laughs> Maybe in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, question two. Do you guys prefer Kamen Rider movies that tie into the series, like the mostly pre- post-decade ones, or take place in alternate settings, like the mostly pre-decade ones? Uh, I thought that the Fies one was interesting. How it was just like a different story altogether. I prefer when they don't just expand upon a period of time that they cut out of the show and assume that you know about. Because you went to go see the movie, so probably the separate stories. I, yeah. Alter- kind of like the Drive movie, except the Drive movie was just kind of meh. Yeah, alternate timelines are okay, but I'd rather it just be like... Here's, uh, I don't know, here's like a little adventure they had on the side when oh, nothing kind, plot related kind of like was happening. how, like an anime movie, how it's just like, uh, this is where they fought a clown man between yeah. episodes 22 and 23. Yeah. Yeah. Like G, like Kamen Rider G4, where it was just like, plunked in the middle of Agito is this wild adventure with a military guy. And uh, it doesn't really have much to do with the actual plot of Agito. It's just a little side story. That's what I like. Alternate universe stuff can be interesting if the alternate universe is interesting. But I, f- I like it more if it's like, here's the setting and the characters that you like. And like here's like a new story in that. My, my brain just jumped from... I, so I have two other ideas for Kamen Rider movies. Um, one could be kind of like how... Um, and I don't know why my brain chose this specific example like the Half-Life games there was like Opposing Force and Blue Shift and it wasn't just like Gordon Freeman it was these other characters that were doing things at the same time so it could be like concurrent events with different characters okay or uh, just go off the wall fuck it doesn't have to be associated with the current show you know do like a ZO I did really enjoy uh, Castlevania 64 and its sequel take place at the same exact time and you play two different characters that are storming the castle from different ways and you keep running into each other through them. So, Cornell and... Yeah! Reinhard Schneider, yeah! Yeah, Yeah, Werewolf Cornell and Reinhard Schneider. (laughs) The true hero of Castlevania. Uh, I th- I'm kind of caught, really. Like, I like the movies that tie into the series that are, like, other adventures because these are the characters that you love and you want to see them do different things. Yeah. Have new adventures. I think I like this, the movies that take place after the end of the series best. Really? I like that as an idea. Maybe not as how they've done it. But I like that as an idea, like, the main thread is gone and, like, a new thread is looming. And they have to, like, find a way to to come together and defeat this new threat. The true ending, yeah. Um, I like alternate settings, too, though. I think that's a really fun way to explore the characters. Like, so, I like to... Godspeed I'm gonna be wishy-washy. Love. Yeah, just, okay. Just make another Kamen Rider G movie. Fuck it. <laughs> It's Kamen Rider H. I love that Kamen Rider wine, G. Wine man. I like his G eyes. My vintage is exquisite. <laughs> um, question three. Since apparently after Decade and Accept Build, all Common Rider series take place in the same world, what is your headcanon of why previous writers do not help out? Drive sort of has an excuse. Apparently, if Drive just believes hard enough, the Earth will open up and Belt Sam will fly out of it into his hand. So, <laughs> maybe always, not. I knew this was going to happen ten years ago, so... <laughs> um, I don't think they all take place in the same world. I think that's just a convenient thing that they did now. 
If it all took place they, in the they make same a lot world, of then Japan is one fucked place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, that a means, lot of monsters have killed a lot of Japanese citizens. And the Skywall has been around for how many years? Yeah. So that the means thing the Skywall existed in how many series, is, technically? Yeah, these series, a lot of the stuff that happens in these series completely negate their ability to be part of the same world as the other series. It's kind of the reason why they started out with, oh, Agito is like a sequel to Kuga, and there's, you know, un- unidentified life forms. And then, like, ten episodes then they're like, we can't fucking do this. Forget it. You can't make that work yet. Well, it, that wasn't really why they did it. The previous writers felt that it was um, uh, disrespectful to Godai, because he wouldn't, like, why wouldn't Godai come Yeah, I remember help? that now, yeah. So they were like, so well, we'll just drop They were that thinking now. about the question that you just asked in 2001. <laughs> yep, so. like, I think it's it's the kind of thing where, like, when it's convenient, when there's a crossover movie, then they cross over, and for that moment, they've always existed together. And yeah. then when it's done, then they don't exist together anymore in a that's, weird kind of way. That's how comic book crossovers used to work. Yeah. Like, the 1970s, I think, crossover between Spider-Man and Superman, they both, like, Clark Kent and Peter Parker work at rival newspapers, and they've known <laughs> about each other's work forever. And that's just how it is. It's like, when Batman and Spawn crossed over, Spawn just goes to Gotham City. <laughs> Like, when Archie and the Punisher cross over, yeah. <laughs> yeah the Punisher just, just to goes to Riverdale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and shoots Archie to death. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like how the the like the Marvel Defenders or, you know, the Avengers or all that, like they they get into it, but they only get into it for like those specific crossovers and series. It's not frequent that they'll show up in each other's like special you know programs the defenders but then no and sense. then the defenders and then like they started doing that for daredevil and all the other shows and then it just made it kind of weird because it's like yeah now they could really just help each other out and they're just not doing it well, they and then all there's live this in the same lady neighborhood that's talking to every single person it's like you know she's talking to daredevil and she's talking to luke cage and I forget the character's name. Everything in Marvel happens in New York City. Well, yep. mm-hmm. And the Defenders, they all live in Hell's Kitchen, the same neighborhood, except Luke Cage. He lives in Harlem. And, and Hell's Kitchen ain't that big. It's really not that big at all. <laughs> I work right next to it. It's not that big. You better like watch out blocks. for a fucking kingpin, dude. <laughs> uh, question four. Previously, I had a question in mind about which Toku franchise would be easier to write, Kamen Rider or Super Sentai, but after the Super Sentai rumor of being in jeopardy, how would you improve Super Sentai? I'm assuming half of you guys are still watching Lupin Ranger vs. Patranger. Nope. 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 None of us are watching <laughs> that's, still, that's still going? Yeah. I think Super Sentai it might seem easier to write because it seems a little formulaic but i think at the same time that kind of makes it that like if you're writing it you're you're more tiptoeing more like it's easier to fuck up because it's it's more constrained the formula might be the problem as yeah. well yeah like, it's the true. formula might be why super sentai is slowly starting to tank yeah it's uh it's old and busted as they say it's just yeah. Stale. I mean, like, I think approaching a Super Sentai to begin with, like a Common Rider series, might be a, a breath of fresh air. Where, like, each character gets introduced one by one, and you get yeah. to learn about that character and grow to, like, care about them before you just start shoving more characters at us. Oh my god, the Q Ranger was terrible with characters. Oh yeah. Some of them didn't have any, like, story fleshed out about them. No. There, there, there was, was a guy like, who liked to cook. Yeah, he was Cook Man. He there was like a girl who cooking. had a fake laugh. Yeah. Dude, that's everyone's waifu, apparently. <laughs> you can't talk shit about her. Uh, Stinger had a cool character arc. That's about it, I guess. I was, there was Dragon Boss. The main guy was cool. It's, I feel like you introduce them one at a time. You give them all their own motivation and backstory and characterization... And then maybe for, like, the last 20 episodes, they finally form a team. 
Yeah. And yeah. like they realize that trying to attain their own goals isn't working. Like they rebuff one another when one of them tries to help another. Like I don't need your help. Yeah, and that would that would be good for like one show. But then you got to do something else because if that's a formula, then that's going to get stale because then the first, you know, 20 or 30 episodes are always just going to be the same thing. I mean, you can run a formula for a while before it gets stale. Also, don't put all the damn focus on the red the red guy. Yeah, that is yeah. a huge problem in Super Sentai. The, the rest of the cast is just non-characters in a lot of them. No. That's something that apparently Power Rangers does a lot better. Uh, where it's not just about the red guy. I'll, yeah. I'll suck uh, Tokuger's dick until the cows come home, but <laughs> all, all the characters in that were pretty good. They were all nicely touched on. I like that. I kind of want to watch Tokuger. I know it was done by my favorite writer, Yasuko Kobayashi. It's pretty good. I've yeah. actually wanted to watch Tokuger for a while, too, it's because got, Max has hyped it up. It's got great music in it. It's yeah, got it's got like a trains. nice childish spirit to it. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. Like maybe I will watch it. It's got a cool. I don't really have any reason not to besides time. I like the villains in it too. Um, I guess that's the end of that question. Unless anybody else has any suggestions <laughs> to improve the Super Sentai formula, make it good. I don't. I don't think I could improve the Sentai formula because I don't know what makes sentai good because i don't really watch it or like it very much and so i would just make it something else that isn't sentai and no one would like it so you gotta have cutie cutie girls you know that's true you gotta make have it all girls men in cardboard suits fighting men in, in rubber suits in like fighting. a in a small cardboard box uh neighborhood was... I feel like the first thing I would do would be to take out the giant robot fights because they're never interesting, and then people would tear Kids me to shreds. love that stuff. You gotta have it. I, the, <laughs> the robot fights are cool and they like mean something. Like if they're if the monster like dies when it's normal size and then grows, it's like ugh. well they already lost, so who fucking <laughs> cares? That's what I was always talking about, Jeff, where, like, they beat the monster for the first time, and the second that motherfucker starts growing, I, I check out. I'm on yeah, my phone for the rest much. of the episode. But uh, if they, like, use the giant robot for something, I don't know. Yeah. So. How, was, uh, how was coddling Sentai Mom Ranger, anyway? <laughs> With the, the three the moms man. that That's came back from previous Rangers? Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. Ah, I kind of want to see that, because... Did that ever get translated? I never heard anything about that. A team of rangers that were all girls would be really cool, but I'm sure, like, boys ages, like, 5 to 12 would be outraged. Yeah, it's a delicate market. Yeah. I don't know, not if you make them all cutie cuties, like you said. 5 to 12 don't give a fuck about cuties. All all, uh, (laughs) Japanese stay-at-home moms would be like, what the hell, where's all my boys at? I can't look at sexy young boys anymore. What is this? That's my impression of a Japanese stay-at-home mom. Yeah. <laughs> Give me them pretty men. Um, he finishes out his email with, Thanks for reading, common writer Don Piantis. Because Ayo. he commonly writes in emails to the podcast. Mm. Oh. Mm, you're, mm, good, you're banned. Good, he good. says <laughs> other people can use that. He doesn't mind. Well... I'm sure people are just lining up. <laughs> thank you to everybody who wrote yeah, in. Thank today. you. Thank you for writing. We, thank you. We thank really you. appreciate it. And Always I'd, love I'd like good to say, emails. If you would like to write in an email to us and get your email read on the show by me and answered by these three idiots. Oh. Then yeah, you can, hey, hold on. You're an idiot, too. I, There's four I, idiots I here. wasn't. I said me and. I was including <laughs> me. Okay, fine. Me, an idiot, the, and these <laughs> other three idiots. It was an ampersand. It wasn't a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you can send your email in to riderclubradio at gmail.com. And if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter at riderclubradio. <laughs> What an incentive. If you would like to do this thing, you can do this thing. <laughs> and you will get and it. Here's, you, and here's how, you, here's how you thing it. If you want to follow us on Twitter, just fucking follow us on Twitter. We're on yeah, iTunes. Dumb, uh, oh, we're on <laughs> iTunes, too, so go check we're that shit iTunes. out. You don't have, if you're like at work or on 
public transit like I am all the time. Yeah, look, it's, if you got to commute... You don't have to have it on YouTube, on your phone. Yeah. yeah, listen to Rider Club Radio on your way there. First half of the episode on the way to work, second half of the episode on the way back. It's a perfect I, day. I literally have no idea whether anyone listens to us on iTunes or not. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. know how to check I, that. Uh, you can check the, the statistics on Libsyn. You can go on there and look at that. Oh, okay. Oh, the iTunes, okay. Okay, well, um, if you do listen to us on iTunes, thanks. If yeah. you listen to us on YouTube, thanks. And if you listen to us on iTunes, please leave a rating, because we are pitifully unrated. Yeah. How did you just we're, look? We're a very unpopular podcast. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think we're unpopular. We're just underpopular. We're the it's only like we're toku bad. podcast. <laughs> yeah, whatever, we like what we do. Yeah, we yeah. make the best toku podcast. I will suck our dicks <laughs> right off our bodies. It's the best one. There you go. Ooh, thanks. Slorp. All, uh, all so out th- there. Th- thanks for tuning in to this episode of Rider Club Radio. We'll back- be back in 30 days for more Rider goodness. See ya. Have a good holiday season. Ho, Merry ho, Christmas. Ho. Happy Stay Hanukkah. Warm. Now enjoy people bells. No. Oh, don't don't people bells. <laughs> Play us off. <laughs> Actually... Here, yeah, it comes. here comes people bells. See ya. Tenshi, kora oru no pi. Ii jan. Oh, 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 oh,